All right. Cool. So usually, you know, it's good to get established, have to do a little chit chat. I haven't started recording yet, so if you want to say anything racist or political, do it now. <laughs> um, uh, get to America now. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, oh no, wait, you heard now Zoom does the thing where it says recording for us. Oh, you know what yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I just oh. noticed your master splinter in the background. That's badass. That is really cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this. Oh, sorry, I'm backwards. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I made that myself. It's uh my uh, dojo rat. I hope nice. I don't... Oh, that's so cool. I hope I don't get copyrighted for this because I literally just traced Master Splinter. But I figure if I trace it myself, I don't know, sooner or later AI will figure it out, but Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now what about the photos in rat. the background? What's that? The photos in the background? Is that you? No, that's just from a really old uh, judo textbook I have oh okay yeah, that's yeah. it's just like this really old-fashioned it's in english but like talking about all the judo uh techniques i always use it in my background kind of for a oh, yeah. nice it works i like it oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like we're speaking to a textbook now <laughs> right? it's, it's so lively coming right out of the pages yeah, <laughs> yeah we just have like our crap <laughs> my work desk and uh <laughs> Our uh, Ura fan towel. There, Ura? Monitor, That's interesting. Yeah. Ura. Ura did some really cool moves this last boss show, didn't he? Hell yeah, he did. Oh my God. Stizori he did against Rudin was like, that was like the pinnacle of, you know, the whole boss show for me. And he's always trying to do crazy moves like that. He doesn't always pull it off. But, but when, when he, he does. does, oh man, it's always fun to see. But, but, like, he could probably win more bouts if he just did more straightforward sumo, but no, yeah. no, we don't want him to do that. <laughs> but, but cool, cool, cool. Wait, before we get into that, I am a terrible host. I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce you. I'm here with uh, Matt oh. and Sabrina, the Sumo Punks. They do their own podcast about sumo, and you actually have, like, a, a dojo or, like, a place to practice sumo in Texas. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Um, well, as part of Dallas Sumo Club, we actually go to the Arlington School of Self-Defense. You know, it's an indoor facility with mats and all that. But um, here in Denton, we're about like a little over an hour, you know, from Arlington. So and, you know, it's a lot of gas money and it's a whole lot of time. So I've, I've just been practicing here with some guys that I've, uh, you know, met here in Denton. And uh, we go to the volleyball courts over at the North Lakes Park. So we just tamp down the sand, you know, yeah. really good. We have a battle rope. So, and the battle rope, uh, the circumference is slightly, ever so slightly bigger than an actual dojo. Not by much, maybe just a few inches. So we just put the battle rope out there. Uh, you know, we do our shiko, our suriyashi, uh, matawari. You know, we do all of our exercises. And then we just get down and dirty, just throw each other around, you know, practice our oshizumo and... It's a whole lot of fun, and I really hope we could get more local folks involved in sumo. We're really just trying to build a bigger sumo infrastructure in Texas. Yeah, and we are planning on building our own dojo in our backyard. Now that we've moved from an apartment to a with house. Dirt? Dirt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I with the clay and everything. Yeah, not the huge, like, the one that they have in the Koku Geekon, where it's, like, you know, 40 tons of clay. Platform and stuff. Yeah. yeah, ours is just going to be, like, built into, like, if you ever seen the inside of a sumo stable, and you see how they have their dojo just kind of built into the floor, it's going to be just something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Required much less dirt. <laughs> but we are not the first ones in America to build our own dojo. Uh, of course, in Hawaii, they've built plenty of dojos, but in the continental U.S., I know uh, up in Kansas, Noah, well, Brock Talley has built his own dojo. This looks nice. His does look nice. And then um, Gabe Eunuch from uh, Grand, Rapids. Grand Rapids Sumo Club, he's built his own dojo before for uh, tournaments. So yeah, he was, um, <laughs> yeah, he did his as part of a, um, it was like a, it was like an art project. It was like a yeah. submission for this art fest. It was called um, Art Prize. Art Prize is the name of the festival. Yeah, it's really yeah, confusing yeah. when we heard about it. They actually had a tournament, like a sumo tournament, using that dojo that he built. Yeah, it was it was really cool looking. I mean, it was it was uh, not as smooth, you know, as the the Koku Geekon one, but it's still, you know, as same trapezoid shape, you know. And um, instead of having the uh, the, the Toku Dawara you know, on the cardinal directions, it was just a, just a circle. Yeah. yeah. 
sounds rad. Sounds rad. But Hell yeah. you know what a lot of people wondering, uh, you know, being in Texas, how, how do you kind of get introduced to sumo? I mean, I'm sure you don't see it just walking down the street. In Japan, it's everywhere. Like, even the lay people, like, kind of know, uh, even, like, basic sumo terminology. But, like, in Texas, how does that come to you? Well, um, whenever I first got into sumo, um, it was during, you know, the pandemic and we were, you know, furloughed from work. So we had a little bit of time to just kind of, you know, do things. That's when we, we had been watching uh grand sumo highlights and we had watched uh, an anime called Hinomaru Sumo <laughs> that really got us, you know, like uh, really wanting to try it. So um, I couldn't find any sumo for the longest time. So I was like, man, I need to find something. I was like, all right, judo, I'm going to do judo. I, I'm six foot four. And at the time I was 530 pounds. I couldn't find a gi that fit. I just couldn't, you know, I looked everywhere and I took all like my little waist measurements. I couldn't find anything. That I think fit. at one point we talked about making you a gi. <laughs> yeah. Just have, getting that rough spun cotton. Yeah. But, um, you know, enough time had passed, you know, after that I was still like, you know, mulling over how to get a gi. And then, uh, Corey Morrison, uh, of Dallas Sumo Club actually um, got on Facebook and he's like, hey, I just want to know who all is interested in trying sumo in the Dallas area. And it was like, me, 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 I want to try. <laughs> and so um, it was a few months from the time that he announced it uh, to the time I actually got there, you know, so whenever I actually uh, started practicing with them, they had been at it for what, was it like a three or four months yeah yeah it had been several months um or not several but at least like three or four yeah so Corey had actually learned sumo from uh justin kizart who runs the dark circle sumo club in austin mm -hmm. and uh, uh the where he came from was uh the california club that's what it's known as now it's just called california sumo but before it was called yama sumo dojo mm -hmm. and it was ran by uh, a former professional yamamoto yama but he just goes by Yama now. Yeah. Um, he ended up moving from California to uh, Missouri. It, St yeah, St. Louis, St. Louis Missouri. Missouri. Now he runs his own uh, sumo club, an amateur sumo club called Show Me Sumo, which, you know, that kind of works on a couple different levels. Yes, but Texas sumo <laughs> came from pro sumo. <laughs> Show Me Sumo. Yeah, show me Sumo. <laughs> but he um but Yama actually was uh teaching at that California club. Uh he taught um Justin Kizer at that club. Yeah. So the lineage of our discipline actually comes from a former professional. Yes. Um Corey actually met Gaga Maru, you know, who's a former Makauchi Rikishi. And uh Gaga Maru taught him how to do a Keiko like they did at his Heya. You know, so Corey kind of turned up the heat and the pressure, you know, of our Keiko. And they're, we're doing pretty much the same Keiko that the professionals do. But, you know, we're not doing it with as we're not doing it on a daily basis. You know? <laughs> yeah. So Gagamaru, um, you know, he he uh, was in the Makauchi division, which is the top division of Ozumo, which is like professional, traditional Japanese sumo. Um, and then. Uh, just trying to define some of the terms for you here. Of course, Keiko is like practice and... Uh... Well, he lives in Japan. He knows. Oh, that's... Oh, I totally forgot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not just talking to me. We're so used just to like to having to explain to the this world, stuff to right? You know, they don't <laughs> yeah. know that, right? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, that's probably a, actually an annoying thing that people do in podcasts is like go off on something like, no, actually, I don't know those terms, you know? So that I, I love that you explain that. And I don't, I, I don't know all the sumo words, actually. I'm I'm more of a judo discipline. My wife actually knows more about sumo than I do. And she's oh, like really? 80 pounds. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but please yeah, go I'm... ahead. Yeah. Finish, yeah. finish your explanation. Oh, I, that's pretty much, I can't even remember half the terms that he just shot out rapid fire. I just <laughs> like, those are the ones I picked up on. So I thought I'd explain. <laughs> well, I guess basically Keiko is important, right? Practice. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I guess Shiko. Like, yes. that's the, like the, the big, uh, what do you call it? The, the big sumo stomps. stomps. The, yeah. yeah. I, I wish I was quicker to pull up a picture. But yeah, you could use your imagination. I might put that in post. But uh, <laughs> but it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I especially do a, doing yeah, 50 Shiko is hard, but the professionals will do like thousands daily. Yeah, that's the standard, um, at least like here in the U.S. for Keiko is they'll do like 50 Shiko per Keiko but yeah the pros do 
so much more. (laughs) But um, here in Texas, the way that we kind of formulated, you know, our Keiko, uh, you know, Corey talked to Gaga Maru. And uh, that's kind of how the Dallas Sumo Club, you know, got the heat turned up with our Keiko style. Um, We also have... um, mighty eagle sumo and they're based out of san antonio and they have uh tom zabel so tom zabel actually wrote the the english language book uh sumo skills um what was like sumo skills um what's the name of the book something for competitive sumo some i can't remember the like subtitle of it but yeah we just call it sumo skills or tom's book yeah (laughs) (laughs) so tom zabel uh had been involved in sumo for i think over 30 years now, a little bit over 30 years. And he had served in the, uh, it was either the Navy or the Air Force and was stationed in Japan. And uh, that's where he picked up sumo. So um, he trained like with a lot of amateurs, you know, during like the, uh, it was like the 80s, 90s, somewhere abouts. And uh, he actually got with the United States Sumo Federation and has implemented a belt ranking system. Mm -hmm, And so, yeah, so with professional sumo, there's the rank is, you know, what uh, what you achieve on the Bonzake. Yeah. You know, the the, the big ranking system. Yeah. The Bonzake is basically just the list of rankings. Yeah. So in uh, Amazumo, you know, amateur sumo, um, you can start out as like, you know, uh, you know, get like a yellow belt rank or green belt you know orange and so they uh they they're like little uh kind of loops that you tie on your mawashi so you just put your mawashi on normally and then you just put the you know your little rank thing so you'll see um some of the university rikishi um you know or even like international if you look at international competitions you'll see the guys that have like their little uh like a little yellow tag or a red tag or like if they're wearing a white mawashi and have that black tag that means they're a black belt you know hmm. and so uh once you get up you know, to, you know, that black belt rank, they have, you know, different Don ranks. And then I think it's either second or third Don that you could reach, achieve, uh, achieve being like uh, the rank of sensei. Right. Yeah. So Caleb Backus, uh, who, who's one of our friends. Um, he Also of Mighty Eagle Sumo Club. Yeah, Mighty Eagle Sumo. And he does um, Sake and Sumo podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but he was one of the only uh in America that has achieved the rank of like, you know, sensei that he can be addressed as sensei and has, you know, the certificate, you know, saying, Hey, you know, you have earned the rank. Sensei. And he's been really pushing Matt to take those belt tests. <laughs> yeah. I, he knows Matt wants to become a, a sensei too. Yeah, I want, I want to teach kids sumo, you yeah. know, the th- what I got out of sumo, I really think kids in my community could really benefit from mm. it. Not that, uh, I don't mean it matters, but uh, what 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 rank are you working on, or have you taken oh, the test at all? I haven't taken any tests, but uh, when I've when I've been talking to Caleb and uh, to Tom, you know, because I've been involved in sumo for what this is going to be my is this third or fourth like year? Third year. Third year. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I do have a lot of you know not just working knowledge, but a lot of uh, historical knowledge. You know, a lot of like kind of like. Um, we did a lot of research just for the podcast. Yeah, you know. You know. Yeah, but um, we're. It's just, it's so fascinating, even when we're not like specifically trying to uh, look up stuff for the podcast or, you know, for actually like uh, trying to develop our own personal sumo skills. It's just fun. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like but each little bit of knowledge that we we gain is just. When uh, we do commentary, you know, we, we've done live commentary for, you know, a lot of different Amazumo uh, tournaments. Yeah. And it really helps to have that working knowledge and to be able to demonstrate, you know, uh, oh, that's an Awatanage or that's an Awatadashinage or, you know, yeah. kind of knowing uh, these different like terms and where they come from. Uh, that's even something they test you on during the belt test. Too. Exactly. Yeah. And whenever you're uh, taking, whenever you're considering uh, terms in sumo, there's a lot of anachronistic terms. Um, like, you know, like what you would call an uchimata. You know, we say kakanage, you know, but it's the oh. s- same kind of move, but we're uh-huh. using a, an older dialect. Uh, whenever okay. we say the number seven, you know, you'll hear, hear people say nana, you know, for seven. We say shichi, you know, shich. And yeah, shichi just... probably sounds more like the actual Chinese. Yeah. Oh, whenever we do. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't think about that yet because some of the moves in judo are, are kind of similar. Of course, you have different grips, but. I never thought, yeah, sumo is way older than judo because, yeah, judo is really only a couple, maybe not even 200 years old, you know, from when Kano did it. 
Yeah, uh, whenever uh, Jigoro Kano did the, um, what do you call that? The uh, I keep wanting to say Koku Gikan, but it's uh, Kodokan. <laughs> is it the Kodokan Judo? Oh, gosh. Yeah, what is yeah, it? yeah the Kodokan, yeah. Yeah, so um, whenever he started that, I know um, a lot of the Tokyo Metro police were wanting to train, you know, to try and get some of that, you know, judo knowledge. I, I do you remember, wasn't that like 1901? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, the turn of the century, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was I, a I, I can't do that. Oh, that's like 124 years. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course they had jujitsu and you know that that yeah. whole story. But yeah, sumo is uh I mean probably that's the coolest thing about sumo is like uh you know the history. Cause it may it makes you wonder, you know, if if there was like if you didn't have to learn all the cultural stuff, right? If you didn't have to speak Japanese, if you didn't have to do the tradition, if you didn't have the whole Shintoist process, you would think that you could just have some NFL linebackers or offensive no. or or professional uh, Greco-Roman wrestlers or whatever just come in and and smash, you know. But because you have to be like the whole package, I don't know. That, so that actually that it's kind of isolationist, but I think it's cool because it keeps the keeps it what it is the whole meditative experience tradition. rather than just making it a another Super Bowl. Exactly, exactly. It's uh, it not gives... only that, but like, um, they actually did implement a rule where each Heya or sumo stable can only have one foreigner, so one like Japanese person, like born outside of Japan. You said Japanese person, or, I'm one sorry, foreign person, one, or... one foreign person born outside of Japan. Um, and you know, yeah. everybody else has to be Japanese in, in the Heya. Um, so that was implemented, I think, because of all the Mongolians that were coming. The Hawaiians in. and the Mongolians. The Hawaiians and the Mongolians, you know, especially with the Mongolians, they have uh, such a huge tradition of grappling there. They have the uh, bulk wrestlers and, um, you know, it's very similar. Bulk is very similar to sumo. And so mm -hmm. they ended up going over to Japan and just excelling at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, you know. For whatever reason, the JSA decided, uh, well, let's just kind of try to tamp this down a bit and say one foreigner per stable. Yeah, but yeah. there's there, there's been ways that people yeah, have I been starting it. Bit much. I think yeah. they're, I don't know. I guess I get it. Maybe they're trying to control the still keep the Japanese. I guess they don't want it to change into something else. But I, they, think, I, I definitely want to keep its cultural identity intact. You know. Yeah, but I think if they're coming from another country. And they're growing their hair long and they're doing the process actually not to get too off topic but there's one story and it was an amateur sumo and he was a big egyptian dude oh yeah oh, azuna arashi yeah azuna arashi so <laughs> yeah. when are you talking about the uh like recent... a backflip after he won Oh no, that was oh, disqualified. Was like, exactly. that, yeah, that was one of his students. That's Abdel Ram uh Abdel Rahman uh El Sefi. Yeah, yeah Abdel Rahman El Sefi. I think. Yeah, that that's I, I remember now. But because um it's it's funny because his coach, you know, Ozuna Arashi was a pro Rikishi, mm -hmm. but um his name is also Abdel Rahman Shalan, you know, so it's yeah, two Abdel Rahmans there. But wow. um yeah, so El Safi uh, was fighting, um, was it Demid Karachinko? I think so, yeah, the Ukrainian. Yeah, Demid Karachinko of Ukraine, okay. and they were lightweights. So this was uh, World Games, Birmingham 2022. This was uh, the lightweight final. In and Alabama. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was an out. There he is, there he is. That's Ozuno Arashi. Oh. So what happened is uh, whenever El Sefi got excited, you know, he did that backflip and- uh, Wait, this is a lightweight? This looks like a big dude. Though. No, he's the coach. That's, That's the coach. The coach. That's Actually, the coach. Um, if you go to our um, our YouTube channel, it's on there. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it says Abdel Rahman El Sefi versus Demid Karachinko, but it's oh. on our- um, on our YouTube channel, but we have like the whole thing from the world games as, as it happened, it just starts out as a pretty standard bout. Yeah. And then after he won, he does his backflip and then uh, Katrina Watts, she is the, the commentator, the announcer, you know, uh, she's, she's an Australian lady. She's badass. An I love her. She's a national sumo treasure. <laughs> yeah. She's, yeah. She, she's very knowledgeable oh, about yeah. sumo. She's very passionate about the sport. And she, uh, oh yeah, there he goes. Do you, do you but have, yeah, so have, this is just on Twitter or X or whatever you call it. 
and they yeah. don't actually show the flip. That's what I want to see. Uh, they're just showing the code. Oh no, yeah, we got <laughs> we got the flip on our on our YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, but, did, did he get disqualified for the flip or the coach flipping out? Well, a little bit of both. Lost. Yeah. So in in sumo, you know, whenever you win, you know, or okay, even if you win, if you lose, yeah, you're supposed to be stoic, straight faced, you know. And then once you step, Spinship. Yeah, when you yeah. step off the dojo, then you'd be like, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but bring but even in Japan, bring me job. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> even in Japan, though, ladies. some of the university guys, the university guys, will get excited. Like they'll oh, yeah. they'll win, and then they'll be like, yeah, while they're in the dojo, but they'll kind of catch themselves you know like oh okay Uh, no that is cool like the stoicism like you win but you got a match tomorrow you know but i think mongolians in bulk they always do like this very expansive thing like i'm freaking bad i mean yeah it's not like spiking the football but it's pretty expressive right but But speaking of which you know there there was controversy when um Hakuho, his last bout ever with the now Yokozuna Terano Fuji. You know, Hakuho was uh, Yokozuna for years and years and years, years. considered to be the greatest of all time. Last bout, last day of the Basho. Um, he defeats Terano Fuji, who was trying to get to Yokozuna during that Basho, and he just goes like, Yeah, was our- yeah. Had like a roar. I mean, the fans loved it, but it was still considered to be very improper. You know, he didn't like do a backflip or anything. He was just like, yeah. (laughs) Foul, right in that kisser. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, is that showed up? Your your boyfriend getting slapped. That's one of her boyfriends getting slapped. I think that's (laughs) Abby slapping him too. Oh, that's not... Oh, I, that's, oh that's Shodai getting slapped. Yeah. Well, no, that Hakuho Terra no Fuji. I, I saw that up there like a second ago. Yeah. But but no, what, what happened, you know, whenever he did that roar, he actually got um, reprimanded, you he know, did. for that. And then whenever he became a, a coach, you know, a, sta- a stable master and, you know, had his own stable of, of wrestlers, they made him sign a paper that says, I am I swear I'm going to behave and not bring any shame or degradation to the world of sumo. Yeah. And yeah. They, but it yeah, they, they, <laughs> I mean, like, he's, and what he's doing now is cool. He's letting his wrestlers eat breakfast. You know, because like in sumo, you know, you wake up, you immediately have to go work out. And then after your two and a half hour workout, if you're lower ranked, you have to fix lunch for everybody. If you're higher ranked, yeah, then you get to eat pretty much, you know, right after practice. Yeah. And in pro sumo, they only eat two meals a day, two which is lunch and dinner. Oh, of really? course, they are very big meals. Yes. But they wake up at like 4 a.m. and immediately start training. So that's one of the things that Hakuho, when he uh, started his own stable, he's now uh, Miyagi no Oyakata. Yeah, Miyagi no. Um, he he really got into um, you know more modern ideas of like nutrition and sports health medicine. and sports medicine. Yes, and so yeah. that's some of the things that he's been introducing into it that I'm I'm hoping are kind of uh not rustling the jsa's feathers too much and what what helps too is uh there's another uh yokozuna that was concurrent you know with hakuho named kisei no sato and uh yeah kisei no sato is uh nisho no seki oyakata now and so uh he actually has a state-of-the-art heya that he had built oyakata just means coach for those yeah 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 Um, so he had a like a state-of-the-art facility and that's where, you know, he was saying, we're going to have breakfast. We're going to be able to have, you know, good, you know, weightlifting equipment. Yeah, so, so everyone, you know, used to have just like, you know, those crappy old school looking barbells, you know, like it was very old anachronistic kind of, you know, workout equipment they had. But, you know, mm-hmm. Hakuho and um, Kisei no Sato are trying to in- introduce more modernity. And okay. it helps, you know, because even though Hakuho is Mongolian, you know, Kisei no Sato is Japanese, and they're both kind of doing the same thing, you know, with their respective uh, stables. So I think if they let Kisei no Sato get away with it, they're going to let Hakuho get away with it, too. Yeah. Ah, it's like a slippery slope type of mentality. Yeah. yeah. And of course, well, Hakuho was never nearly as bad as uh, Asa Shoryu I was. Think was punk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but actually, that 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 kind of p- piggybacks on what we were talking about before. So, talking about like keeping the tradition. But what is like 
just using like because sumo is kind of ritualistic there's something special about it but a lot of it is like just like bro science right i mean it's like <laughs> not it's a little superstitious but that's what oh, makes yeah. it right. interesting, right but if we add in these new diet methods and weight training regimens does that change sumo does it make it different does it you, you know, know what i mean is it yeah, i think yeah. it does it, it makes it a little bit different, um, but if you really think about it, for as hard as they've tried to kind of keep sumo like the exact same way as it was during the Edo period, it's not. You know that it has gone through a lot of gradual. They changes. say it hasn't changed in thousands of years, but it really has. Like it the, has changed okay. so much. The size of the dojo has changed. Whenever they introduced uh, television, that they, they uh, there were some poles, you know, that were kind of in the corners of where the dojo is. They've removed the poles and they suspend like a little the shrine tassels. roof. Yeah. Yeah, they have the the roof thing with the tassels where their poles are supposed to be, and it's suspended instead. so that it doesn't. You know the the TV cameras don't have anything, you know, obstructing it. Right. And then, um, what is it? The whenever they built the Koku Geekon, you know, that's uh, it's way bigger and way more modern than what it used to be. Uh, that like the way the old Back one I, before it burned down. <laughs> you know, say the old one that I didn't get. Did it get destroyed in the war, or did it just burn down? Or like, something. I think I it got destroyed in the war. Yeah, it's it. It got pretty fucked up for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think it's around the 50s or the 60s is whenever the new Kokugi Khan in its modern incarnation, you know, was built. But even then, there's been lots of different changes. Uh, the way that, you know, rules for the Rikishi, uh, when social media was introduced, you know, of course... A couple of them got a little uh, out of hand with social media and, you know, posted mm -hmm. pictures and videos of themselves tying each other up with ropes. I don't think and... it was that bad, but I'm kind of a freak, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice, nice, nice. But, but there was Abi and uh, his attendant at the time, Wakamoto Haru. And you know, Wakamoto Haru is a Maku Uchi Rikishi in his own right now. Yeah. But at the time, he was Abi's uh, Skebito. <sighs> His attendant. Yeah, so, you know, the Abby had tied him up and put duct tape on him and him. And you could hear these girls giggling in the background while they're all, you know, tied up. But, you know, they tied Abby up, too, and Abby's all, you know. Yeah. But the JSA well, was like, oh, my God. So inappropriate. And they took everyone's social media away. So oh. the stables can have their own, like, you know, Twitter account or Instagram account or whatever and post – um content with the rikshi but the individual rikshi cannot have their own but some like, of them public accounts some of them do they just don't post anything yeah like like toby zaru has his own he just doesn't have a profile picture and i think it, he has like a kind of weird pseudonym where you would know it's him but it doesn't directly say it's if, him if you know huh. whose account is whose you can like dm them but they're, yeah, they'll talk to you if you dm them yeah they're, they're kind of hard <laughs> really? to find in english uh, not in English. <laughs> no, that that's how Corey uh, from Dallas Sumo Club met Gagamaru. Was we uh, did the oh, Cowboy he's Georgian, Cup? Right? He probably speaks. Yeah, 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 he's Georgian. Yeah, we did the Cowboy Cup Sumo tournament, and afterwards we had an after party at one of our club members' houses, and so everyone was a little buzzed up, and Corey just got the he got the courage to just call him. Yeah. And so we did have a Japanese speaker with us. Uh, her name's Eddie Madorikawa. From Dark Circle Sumo. Yeah, she's from Dark Circle Sumo in Austin. And so she kind of had to translate. So, you know, going from, you know, drunk English to, you know, drunk Japanese, you know, it's just kind of. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, but that's, that's, that's just kind of how, you know, but he was, he was retired at the time. So he probably wouldn't have gotten into to too much trouble or anything, but still the fact that he, answered a drunken instagram call you know from the other side of the world a call you didn't even text him first you just called that fool yeah yeah just called <laughs> i love gagamaru though he's he's such a sweet guy he is and it, whenever you do butsukari training with them it, it feels like you're hitting a brick wall oh you actually yeah. got to yeah Oh, yeah, yeah. He came down to a uh, Roller Town Showdown. It was a sumo tournament that uh, we, Corey put on the tournament to be in the spirit of Ozumo. Yes. So it was like, uh, we had like the big purple uh, curtain, you know, hanging from the from the ceiling. Uh, we didn't have the, the different colored tassels or anything. No. 
but uh, we even had like a little dohyo eerie like ring entrance ceremony, you know, with all of us and uh, the zabutan. Yeah, there were zabutan cushions, you yeah. know, surrounding the and and there was an elevated platform. It wasn't made out of clay, but you know, it was just like a stage, and it even had like the little ramps on the side, trapezoid shape. And then we just put wrestling mats and the uh, the rollout, you know, dohyo mat, you know, on top of it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the and the International Sumo Federation, uh, which is a Japanese organization. Uh, the regulation dohyo are like they're like white polyvinyl kind of mats, and then they have like a, a turquoise colored uh, tawara, and it's like made out of pool noodle kind of material. It's like yeah. like foam tawara. And uh, the tawara is the actual ring of the dohyo. Yeah, the the little outs border of the ring. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm such a huge dude, you know, when you see pro sumo and they have like the rice bales, you know, for the Tawara, they're able to perch on top of them, but I'm so heavy whenever you I just squish them down, I just squish them down and I actually lost a bout because I was trying to brace myself on the Tawara, but I was just too heavy, just squished everything down. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was bad. <laughs> wow. Oh, is wild. that Gaga? Oh, there's Gogs. Yeah, there's yeah. Gogs. He's got he got a he got a pet name for him. That's adorable. <laughs> What's up, Gogs? What's up, Gogs? I have a little video on my phone of him, um, like really drunk dancing to Dr. Dre. Yeah, he's he just. <laughs> doot, doot, doot. How well does he speak English? Not very. Um, Not very well. You yeah, know, a, uh, a little bit. He had like a couple of thank yous or you are my friend. You know, he's like. Few words that I don't think he wants me to repeat on this podcast, but <laughs> okay, right but uh... no, it was it was funny though. He had he had a lot of fun, and um, there were a couple of Japanese speakers, but for the most part, we were just having to use our phones or gestures or you know or Eddie, yeah or Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, that was a whole lot of fun. But to have an actual, you know, pro ricochet kind of help us tune up the way that we, you know, do our own practices, the way that we, uh, you know, our form, even even just having, you know, your chugoshi, you know, be like, oh, well, you want to bend a little bit forward, don't overcommit, make sure your legs are, you know, underneath you, but they're bent. You want your you, you want your low stance to come from your knees being bent, not from your back being bent, kind right. of thing. Oh, you know? okay. So yeah, he tweaked a lot of kind of like what we did, but. Honestly, it made a whole lot of difference um, because Dallas Sumo Club started bringing home a lot more hardware, you know, from tournaments, not just in the U.S., but even overseas. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have Hayden Southall, who is one of our uh, hardcore heavyweights. Uh, he took home the gold. Did he take? I, I can't remember. No, he just took the gold in um, heavyweights from the Scottish Sumo Open. Yeah. And then um, Etan Perez. Etan is a... Uh, one of the first of four women to ever medal at a world sumo championships. So, you know, the one put on by the international sumo federation. So um, it was Etan Perez, Christina Griffin Jones, um, Madison Gwynn, Madison Gwynn and uh, Kellyanne Ball. Kellyanne Ball. Kellyanne Ball. She is amazing. She is she, a hardcore sumo tori. She brought home a uh, silver from the world combat games in sumo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She actually was trained, directly trained by Yama um, it, out in LA back when he was in charge of um, that particular- The, the California club. club. Yeah. Um, is it the California club or the LA club? I don't know what they're calling it, but they called it Yama Sumo Dojo back then. Yeah, I think they're calling it California now, but there's other California clubs, you know, but they're just, hey, it sounds like a sandwich. <laughs> but uh, but uh, so the, the California Sumo Club, and then there's uh, OC Sumo, Sequoia Sumo. Uh, Honu. Honu from San, San Diego. Diego. We love those guys. Yeah. So th there's a few, but they just call it the California But yeah, club. Kellyanne Ball is a national sumo treasure. She truly really <laughs> is. But um, but they were the first four women from the U.S., adult women, mind you, to win a medal at that competition. Wow. Um, I think there was a kid from Hawaii that may have won. Ask you, uh, how do you spell yeah. her name? Kellyanne Ball. You think there's any YouTube footage of her? Oh yeah, we uh, yeah, we have it on our YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Yeah, so there's a little punk rock soundtrack behind it, but we do have um her gold medal or no her uh was it no it's the bronze medal from the uh, the bronze medal from the world, uh, world, world sumo, sumo championships. championships and then her silver medal run from the world combat games. The from the, the world combat games is the one that's the most 
it's it's got the best video production on there. Yeah, it was well, at uh, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, so the video looks really good. Man, they had all those fancy lights and stuff. They had like music playing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they awesome. made a whole production out of it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's part of the world. There's one that says she just won't quit or something, and that's like her. Um... Is it on a playlist or? Oh, it should just be like on the videos. Like if you just do videos. Okay. And then it's down a little bit. Oh, here? Uh, I think it's... Cherry Blossom Festival? Wait, no, oh, no, it's up above that one. It's above that one. Uh, it... Up a little bit more. Are these in chronological? Yeah, go up a little more. Yeah, I think it's up a little bit more. Is okay, it... that's the consulate's oh, cup. Yeah, that's uh, consulate's up a little bit more. Okay, that's one of the... Okay, is that the one up oh, at the top of them? Yeah. There we go. So yeah, that's there Kellyanne Webb showing us her back. So she... okay, well that one she lost, but yeah, but that was was that Kon Hiori? I think that was Kon Hiori. Kon Hiori is a uh, Little Miss Sumo on Netflix. Yeah, powerhouse Japanese uh, women's sumo champion. Was that Zuzana or was that oh, Violetta? She... Oh, I think I saw that part of that, and that was against her. Yeah, yeah, the Little Miss Sumo on Netflix. Um, but she does a lot for women sumo in Japan. Like Kon Hiori, like she's she's an icon. Yeah, Kon Hiori is like a Japanese women sumo national treasure. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Kelly Ann's like her form, her power, like just everything. She's hardcore. Oh, did you see, see that Hinka? <laughs> <laughs> she tried to get Hinka. She's like, nope, come back here. <laughs> Uh, there goes another one. Yeah. All those, all those lightweights like to hinka her. Yeah, but the hinka is well, where you gotta like, do what you gotta do, man. Hey, gotta do, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Kellyanne um, is to to not go forward, right? To try to get around. Yeah, like, sidestep. Yeah, or sometimes a side jump. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll say Hasho Toby. Yeah. What's that? The eight boat jump. Yeah, they'll try to they'll do like an actual instead of just a, a little sidestep, they'll leap in the air and jump like try to get behind them, you know. Because getting behind someone in sumo is like that's like the sweet spot. If you could like just capture a good angle, because sumo yeah. is pretty much, you know, they say to do Yokozuna sumo, you know, you keep going forward, you always go forward. But sometimes if you could get a good angle on someone, you know, that it makes it easier to get them off their center, gravity, lift them up, and just drive them out. Yeah, maybe even not get beside or behind them, but get beside on the yeah. side if of them. You get instead behind of them, them, though, that a kurodashi, you know. Oh yeah, they're they're they have no chance if you get all. Yeah, the way if you get all the way behind them, they're easy to push out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's sumo. An interesting oh, go ahead. Point. Yeah, I mean, because it's like, I mean, obviously, like one guy, like who's good at is like was in Ho, and I mean, he he's got out of the Makuichi, but. He's got injuries he's dealing with. Yeah, yeah he's, he's but, a Makushta now. He's, but, he's... Yeah. After a while, people figure out, like, he would kind of uh, encourage the bigger guys to chase him, and then he would win. But when they would just sit there, he, he would usually didn't have much of a chance. Oh, see, there's uh, that's Katrina Watts, the lady that was posing with Kellyanne a second ago. But she's the one that was yelling at big old Ozuna Arashi. Get off the dojo. Like, Get off the dojo. <laughs> oh, okay, so here we got the little American team here. Oh, there's see, there's, team that's, all, that's yeah. the four uh, American women that got the first bronze medal like yeah. ever. But okay. that's, you know, the first American medals, you know, for adult women ever at that particular tournament. So that's that's historical shit, man. I'm Hell yeah. very proud of them. And then uh, aren't really that large, right? I mean, they're like maybe. Yeah, like yeah I think Madison's a lightweight, right? Yeah, Madison. No, Madison's middleweight. Is she middleweight? What is a lightweight, though? What are the weights? Or is it written somewhere? Or... Yeah, yeah. If you uh, just look up sumo uh, weight classes, they'll pop up. You, you'll run into a couple things that sumo doesn't have weight classes, but there. Okay, so here's the thing about sumo weight classes. In Ozumo, in the Japanese traditional professional sumo, that's true. There are no weight classes. Uh, if you're, you know... Uh, 180 pounds, you could go up against someone who's 300 pounds in, in Ozumo. In amateur or international sumo, there are weight classes that's uh, going to be lightweight, middleweight, light, heavy, and heavy. And then um, I don't remember, unfortunately, what the cutoff is for each one, but I think Matt has that. Um, yeah, it's, I have it all in like uh, in metric, not really in... Um... 
Let's that's see okay. here. Most of the world yeah, for, does that, right? Most, I was about to say, most, for, about most to say but since... <laughs> for any U.S. listeners, you're just going to have to do just a little Google bit it. of mouth, uh, math education. <laughs> All right. So for the men's divisions, um, it's 115 kilos uh, or above. You know, that's, you know, the, the heavy weight. So that's about, what, 254? Somewhere around there? Ish. Ish. Somewhere around there. So that's heavyweights, uh, light heavyweights between 100 and 115 kilos, okay. middleweight between 85 and 100 kilos, and lightweight is anything below 85 kilos. Okay. And so women's is uh, greater than 80 kilos is heavyweight, 73 to 80 kilos is light heavyweight, 65 to 73 kilos is middleweight, and then anything below 65 kilos is lightweight. Is this right? I know it's backwards, but. Open weight, heavy weight, over a hundred. That sounds right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, eighty. Well, I mean, the interesting point when you look at the old sumo wrestlers, like early turn of the century, they weren't that big. Nah, like, they, uh, they were pretty like, wiry, you know. But they were. Yeah, I, I actually think those matches were actually crazy because they had so such great balance, you know. Yeah, you really didn't start to see the really large dudes until the Hawaiians came in. Yeah, like I mean, the... there, there had been some some pretty big dudes. Uh, oh, gosh, what was the one that used to fight um, Chiyo no Fuji? Uh, what was his name? Oh, God, I can't remember. Kitana Fuji. How could I even? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a he was a man mountain. That was, that was he was a huge dude. It was definitely a lot more rare back then, for sure. Yeah. So when you start getting into people like, you know, Akibono, who was what, six foot eight? Dude, Akibono, Musashi Maru, Konishki, freaking Konishki, yeah. <laughs> Konishki, you, you, I'm sure uh, a lot of people have seen that picture where it's like a huge sumo wrestler squatting down, you know, make, like, making some real intimidating eyes at like another sumo wrestler. You see just the back of the smaller sumo wrestler, you know, but it's just this big Konishki just kind of staring you down. It's like, I love that photo so much. Or the other photo that he had um, of that little tiny scrawny kid, like pushing on his belly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Konishki is a big dude. All of those guys were huge yeah, dudes. Yeah, lions. Yeah. Enormous. And then a lot of the uh, Mongolians as well. You know, you got like Ichi Dojo. Yeah. You've got like... Um, or even some of the Eastern Europeans, like Baruto. Even oh, yeah. Gaga Maru is pretty, pretty huge, too. Yeah, yeah. I met Gaga Maru. He's like, I'm, I'm six foot four. He's about my height. Actually, I think he is my height. But it was it was wild to, you know, just see just this big dude. Because, I, you know, I'm used to being one of the biggest dudes in the room for the most part. But standing next to Gaga Maru is like, wow, he's, he's a huge dude. <laughs> Not that there aren't really big Japanese guys, too. but yeah, Like Yama? Uh, Yama actually holds the world record for being the heaviest Japanese person. Yeah. You know, and uh, actually he might be the heaviest Japanese person in history. Wasn't he, doesn't he also hold the record for being the heaviest sumo wrestler ever? No, that was Aurora. Or was that? okay okay he's one of the heaviest though and he's japanese yeah yeah but that's very rare for japanese people to have like just that kind of stature but you know yama yama has that stature yama's very yama, special we love yama, yama, yamamoto oh, yamamoto yama yes yamamoto Ma, yama was he good he was, was actually in sports illustrated he, recently did he go pretty far or he made it to the Makauchi division, but what had happened is uh, in the, was it the 2010s or something like that? There was some sort of scandal and they ended up like firing a bunch of dudes and yeah. he got caught up in that. Yeah, there was a few that got caught up in it, but it was, um, there was like a huge thing. Uh, they called it Yaocho, you know, Yaocho Zumo. Is this him here? Uh, let me see if I can find, no, that doesn't look like him. He's, like he's like way him. bigger. Let's see who's on the other side. Oh, there he is. Oh, is that him? That looks like him. Hold on, I could I could tell from his body movements when he starts moving. Okay. But yeah, that's that looks like him. Yeah, I think that's him. Yeah, he's a pretty big dude. But uh, what's that? Uh, and he's the heaviest wrestler ever. No, heaviest Japanese person ever. Like oh, uh, the heaviest person of Japanese, oh, you know, lineage. That Japanese. Is thick, son. <laughs> yeah. But that's good. Like he oh. carry he carry himself, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And even even today, whenever he does uh practice bouts he's fast 
very fast. You, you know, we don't, especially like in our culture, we don't normally think of like really big, heavy, fat people being able to have a lot of speed. But that's the difference with sumo is that, you know, you do learn how to be really fucking fast while also being really huge. <laughs> and that's that's one of the things with the, with the Tachi eye, you know, that initial charge, you're starting from a crouch and then you're sprinting, you know, at your opponent. So that takes a lot of explosive power. And even if you see, you know, that uh, a lot of these, you know, Rikishi do have like, you know, huge legs, whatever you, if you were to really pay attention to their muscles, their muscle striations, you can see solid, mean, defined muscle underneath, you know, just a little flabby, you know. I think with... the closest yeah. thing would be American football. Yeah. But then you still don't get dudes that are as huge as they are in sumo. Yeah. But, you know, there's still some pretty, you know. Pretty giant offensive linemen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they have to be able to sprint. Yeah. yeah. So it is, it is possible. It's just people don't really think about it that way because of some of the stereotypes we have about larger bodies, you know. But um, it's always well, fun to watch. Not sure. They're not running marathons. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. Not, that's not, that's like, even not crazy. They're not running marathons. So even even in like in judo, you know, you have um your uh, what was it, Svetlana Yoronka. Oh yeah. Yeah, Svetlana Yoronka is a judoka from uh, Ukraine, and she went to sumo. But um, when she was a judoka, you know, she was like a little bit smaller. But when she got to sumo, you know, she put on more weight. But she is indomitable oh like, yes again? oh svitlana like s-v-i-t l-a-n-a -A. Uh -huh. and the last name is yoromka is it y-o-r your oh your own it might start with an i or it might start with a y talent let's see oh no not oh, no, that that's one. a singer <laughs> maybe that's a popular name that is down not her yeah, try Svitlana and Sumo. She might pop up there. Well, I, I know she was at the World this. World Games. Yeah. This definitely looks like a sumo wrestler here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Svitlana. I, I'll pay money to see. Oh, wow. Okay, never mind. Oh, dang. <laughs> hey, man, okay, I've seen right. dudes do Chico I, that look I kind of like that. I for some, some sumo pole dance. <laughs> you, know, you made sure you got some extra bolts in that bar so don't don't give our coaches an idea because like whenever we have those after parties where we do the the karaoke they'll be breaking out the pole too <laughs> oh, man. i would not put it past them <laughs> but no so but yes but lana yoromka uh she was like um a world medalist you know in judo and then once she got to uh sumo she just she she just cannot be no, I, I mean, some of the Japanese girls had, you know, like, is this it? yeah, oh, yeah, that's her. Yep, that's there her. She is, and there's another one of her teammates. Uh, yeah, Svetlana, there she is. Let's see what she does because she is, she's just got power. See, not a what whole lot that? of that speed on the yeah, touch. Seems a little bit. See, boom, look at that, boom, just. I love how whenever she wins, she puts her arms up, like, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah that's actually kind of a that's actually kind of cool she got yes. that good angle too the double what do they call Boom. that kanaziki when you grab their arms from above i'm sorry what'd you say where'd you go oh when you grab the arm like that yeah yeah oh that's a uh, hitaka komi yeah hata kikomi yeah, that yeah. Didn't, i think she's got the same care color as the the singer but that, that's probably not her yeah <laughs> <laughs> you wrong uh, yeah. okay cool um yeah wow but yeah she started out doing judo and uh i've watched some of the so video she wasn't but... that big no she no not when she was a judoka she was still you know like pretty big she was you know in a heavyweight class but uh -huh. uh, when she got into sumo she was like oh no i got this <laughs> this is my chance all right yeah uh, yeah because you can't just eat bull crap right you gotta like Regiment. Yeah, you gotta actually. It's it's uh in pro sumo, their diet is actually very very healthy. Yeah. Uh, the only um I would I wouldn't even call them empty calories, but you know the way that they keep that weight on is just by eating a whole bunch of rice. So, yeah, yeah. The chanko nabe itself is um super nutritious. It's full of uh like meat and vegetables, pretty yeah, much, and just, that's it. It's got like some dashi broth, probably some bonito. And they in there. they have done um 
like uh, studies on uh, sumo wrestlers and their bodies, and they found that most of the fat that they carry is actually subcutaneous. So it's not like the- um, There's no visceral fat. Visceral fat. You know, the, the bad fat that like wraps around your organs and stuff. It's, um, it's mostly like right under the skin. So when sumo wrestlers uh, retire, you'll see that they actually lose weight super fast yeah that's what happened to gaga maru like gaga maru was probably one of the bigger sumo wrestlers mm -hmm. you know he was a uh, almost 500 pounds i would think but uh whenever he came to roller town you know in texas he had slimmed up he had lost i would say what would you say 150 to 200 pounds I'd maybe? Say, yeah at least 200 yeah he, he lost a lot yeah, but um, he put his uh, mawashi on, and uh, no, he he was still in good fighting shape. You know, he just wasn't like as huge, you know, as he was. And but uh, most of the weight is actually muscle. Yeah, you know, and and that's another stereotype about sumo that's um pretty common is that you know it's just it's all fat. It's just like fat dudes bumping bellies, you know. But um, if you see the way that they train and like how hard they train and how much time they spend training, because they don't have day jobs. That's all they do. You know, they live in the sumo stable. They do sumo 24, well, not 24 seven, but you know, that's their life. most of the day, every day of the week. And all, all that mass that you're seeing is mostly just pure muscle. It's just meat. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the, yeah, some of the guys like Yutaka Yama, whenever Yutaka Yama um, retired, like he lost, like Yutaka Yama is making an effort to keep on like the muscle mass, but like all of his, you know, fat just kind of melted away. But you could still see, you know, that huge, like his biceps, like he just put his arm up to gesture in a little interview I was watching and it just went, Brr. you know, I was like, damn, he's still all fit. So if you want to see some like examples of like the kind of muscle that Arishi has, um, Chino Fuji, oh, yeah. Chino Fuji is a good one Ishiura. to look up. Ishiura as well. I, we actually just got through recording a segment for our Valentine's Day episode where we did um, a vote on who has the best butt in sumo. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was. <laughs> and some of these names came up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah we had that. yeah, the our Instagram. <laughs> I drew that picture. Who did, this? Who did this? This is freaking genius. You did. I, I did. I drew that. <laughs> we like have that so... design on our uh, Redbubble and T Public shop it's, too. It's so yeah. wrong in all the right ways. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like the fan and like the pun on the buns and the bun <laughs> it doesn't work in japanese like if you say bun and bond they'd just be like no those are different <laughs> that's why it's funny you know yeah. <laughs> but we learned we learned the booty kits yeah booty kits that was like the our vocabulary word of the episode that yeah. we learned. it basically <laughs> means i don't know that it, what's that oh booty kits it, it it comes mostly from manga it's oh, uh ketsu. ketsu like ass yeah yes. ketsu. Yes, it it, What's the it basically means like booty? a big Bubble brown bo booty, yeah. Like a oh. badonka donk is a booty kiss. <laughs> So like, uh, what's that? Whatever we were, um, because I I troll a whole lot of uh, there's a subculture of sumo like in Japan of a lot of women, mostly like kind of middle aged women. They're they're called sujo, sujo, and they are like hardcore fans so i've met a few um I'm online mind you um like english speaking you know sujo and a lot of uh expats that moved to japan that became sujo and so they're the ones that introduced me to words like puriketsu yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's funny because a lot of uh, my sumo fandom where i spend a lot of time with people oh. online are with a lot of like these sujo you know these women that are really into these sumo wrestlers so you know you you Talk to a lot of like well, you know. Sorry, Sujo, is that does that mean they do sumo or they they're into sumo? They're into sumo. They're, they're like they're sumo groupies, kind of. Yes, oh, sumo groupies. Because nice. they're they're older women, you know. They're they they just like to look at these hot young men. Not all of them are older. Some of them are younger. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of younger Sujo. Bad candy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh yeah, there was me and my homeboy uh, Dan. That's uh, where we practice. Oh, down one more. That's where we do. Yeah, see, that's me and Dan. We do the volleyball courts, you know, in Denton. 
Yeah. Oh, this is a volley buckler. Okay. Yeah. So I was trying to show him how to do just kind of like a basic hip throw, but you know, he's shorter than me. And like, you know, I was trying to get down low so I could get my butt cheek in there to like, you know, do the flip. I just couldn't get down low. So the skinnier guy in the back, he, uh, he actually trained to make maps, you know, the Marine Corps kind of thing. And so they drilled a lot of judo throws into him. So I'm like, just show him a hip toss, please. Yeah. (laughs) That was just too big to do one on, on poor Dan. Ah, uh, maybe yeah. It's probably better for the uh, your pull down, snap down, push out. Oshi Zumo, maybe more. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Oshi. Yeah. That that's a lot of people tell me is like, no, just you got that long reach. Just you know, do your Oshi Zumo. But I don't know what it is about a lot of Americans being just so attracted to grabbing the belt. You know, I feel like I, you grab the belt, you have something to work with, you knock someone off balance, but it doesn't always work out. Sometimes just shoving somebody in the face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good notawa you know yeah, yeah notawa that's that's something that happens to me all the time and oh, now notawa? i don't even notice it yeah notawa whenever uh it's a thrust oh um, in the throat yeah yeah oh yeah they do that to me all the time especially like the the um faster faster guys you know like i'm getting ready to run at my tachi but someone puts their palm on your throat and you run into it you're not gonna be moving very fast forward anytime soon you know it, it hurts you're like Bleh. yeah <laughs> and it, it's jarring you know people don't typically get you know thrusted in their throat and they're not you can't grab on it and no one really grabs your throat yeah. they're just pushing on it it's, but it's, it's, not like it's that would be an illegal move if you yeah no one's getting steven seagal around here <laughs> i'm just a cook <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, so when you do these uh these keikos, these practices outside, do you yeah. get like uh people stop by and watch, or is this kind of like an isolated area? Yeah. yeah, we get people every now and again, and that was one of the uh the ways that we were trying to get recruits uh in Dallas when we first started. Um, they uh it was called Kid Springs Park uh in South Dallas, and they would they would live stream the practices and then they would uh, hope to just get people, you know, just walking by doing the little, uh, you know, walking the trails and all that. And we actually did get a couple of recruits that way. Um, a guy named Sean Bird, he's about maybe six, 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 eight, somewhere around there. And that guy's got a reach. He is oh, yeah. like our Oshu Zumo specialist, but they, they picked him up just, you know, fighting around in the, in the park. And in Denton, that's kind of how we ended up getting Dan was, uh, it was me and Trey, and I used to train with another guy, but um, he he was in the military and his uh, joints, and it, it, he liked sumo. He just couldn't stick with it because it just hurt too much, you know. Uh-huh. So, but Dan saw me practicing with that guy, so he was like, "You know what? I want to try that." So now I I just it's just me and Dan and Trey. See, there's Dan and Trey. Mm-hmm. So, um, where's well, this is when they. First, oh. I think this is the first. This Keiko. is our, yeah, the first Keiko that we yeah. have these two. <laughs> so they're they're like pretty much uh, indented. Keep in mind, Denton is only like an hour north of Dallas, you know. So um, these are the the me and these two guys, Sabrina. You know, we're the the Denton club, and then in Dallas. Dallas is uh, I'm still a part of Dallas Sumo Club. I mean, I better be. I pay my dues, but uh, no, it's um, it's bigger. There's a lot more people. There's a lot more. Um, I would just say connections, I guess. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. you know, this is more of like, you know, our, our Keikos aren't as intense as Dallas, you know, but not yet anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm slowly turning up the heat, you know, um, cause we just started, um, when was the first one we, that we did? I want to say it was in October. Yeah. yeah. But uh, one of the things that, um, whenever people would go to these Dallas sumo club Keikos, especially after Corey talked to Gaga Maru is, um, if they can't keep up or if they're not, you know, sometimes it's just too intense, you know, and there is a whole lot of testosterone flying around, you know, a Dallas practice, but um, mine tend to be a little bit warmer and fuzzier, you know, yeah. uh, cause I want sumo to be fun. You know, I want people to, you know, kind of the, the things that like the mental toughness, I kind of want that to be a gradual thing. I don't want you to have to just, uh, you know, jump off the high dive and yeah, just immediately if, expect mental if, toughness. If it's you know. something you're not used to, it's it could be like, you know, jumping from the frying pan into the fire or whatever. Um, so it, it, it does help to have like that more gradual because, you know, we have people coming in that have either not done any martial arts before, not done any combat sports, 
or they have, but it's been like years and years and years, you know, like when they were kids. And that's, so, that's one of the things about sumo as well is because you see a lot of, you know, bigger dudes, you know, just bigger folks in general, you know, doing sumo is that um, it attracts, you know, yeah. folks that have that body type. Uh, Cause whenever I first started, I was like, man, I need to do something to, you know, lose some weight. I need to get active. You know, uh, at the time I was like, what, 37, 38. And yeah. I was like, I'm not getting any younger. I need to make sure I'm taking care of myself. So that, that's whenever I started looking, looking for judo and then ended up, you know, doing sumo. But um, and let me tell you, it can be intimidating for fat folks to even get started with any sort of fitness yeah. because of how judgmental people can be, even just going to the gym. You know, like a lot of people just won't do it. They'll just try to work out at home because, yeah. you know, they'll they'll join Planet Fitness for like a month. And then somebody says like some snide remark to them in the fucking locker room or something. And then they're like, well, fuck this. Why do I even come here if I'm going to, you know, feel bad about myself to this bullshit? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they're trying to like um, improve their health, improve their their physique even and it's just nobody sees it as like oh you know good job you're you're trying to do this thing to to improve yourself they're just like oh look at that fat fuck <laughs> isn't it funny look at his fat jiggle you mm -hmm. know so with sumo it's expected that there's going to be people with more body fat people who are larger and so it's a more comfortable environment for people to go into to you know start working on themselves like that yeah and not everyone has to wear uh you know just go traditional and wear nothing under the mawashi <laughs> you know like we all have compression shorts now, like the I wear... first day at sumo club you have to wear the mawashi <laughs> but now first now sumo club tell everyone about sumo club yeah pretty <laughs> much like, well, you have to wear the mawashi <laughs> Show everyone your butt cheeks. <laughs> but no, now I go, I go traditional at tournaments. Now the last tournament I didn't go traditional at, I sucked. So now I have a superstition built. That's word. one of those things. That's one of those superstitions is that um, if you do go traditional, which going traditional means wearing nothing but the Mawashi, your sumo will be better. And it, it is like the when I first went traditional, I did really good at that tournament. I was like, yeah. But you definitely don't have to. For example, Hayden, Hayden Southall has never gone traditional and he's a beast in the dojo he did one he did one. Oh, did he yeah mr olympia um oh, that's right because it was uh required yeah so yeah. mr olympia you know the arnold schwarzenegger you know bodybuilding competition oh okay so, yeah so they're do kind of sumo-esque type of competitions but i think the rules are yeah. oh that was in uh what's it, the world's strongest man kind of thing oh, like yeah, i've, I've like... seen they had like Marius Peter you know do it but technically he touched the ground with his hand when he was falling but they didn't know yeah. It look cool. But yeah. But no, I'm this like... this year was actual sumo, like uh, what do you call it? an amateur sumo event at the Mister Olympia competition. So yes. th this wasn't the bodybuilders; these were actual sumo tori, yeah. you know, competing. Okay. And uh, they actually had that Ozuna Arashi that 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 we were wa watching earlier, and, and another Soslan. Yeah, Soslan Gagliev. Um, he's a uh, Wakanoho, Wakanoho, like yeah. another former Makauchi Rikishi. So they participate in that Mr. Olympia tournament. And uh, whenever they did open weights, uh, Sumo Dan, Dan Kalbfleisch, he mandated that everybody <laughs> had to go traditional, you know, for the uh, for the open the weight because he wanted it to be more in the spirit of the Ozumo, you know, the grand sumo. So. Tra traditional. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a, a couple guys in there that uh, were bearing buns for the first time. There's a YouTuber named Sensei Seth. Are you familiar with that guy? Oh, yeah, yeah. He tried yeah. secret martial arts. He's like, hey, this is my first time doing gym. I was like, mm, not your first time. <laughs> but well, he got I get it. I get it. You're not a yeah, yeah, no, no. I got you. He got a, he got into sumo, and now he's in love with it. Yeah, so yeah. he's been sticking with it. But he, uh, this is with Raijin Sumo Club out of North Carolina. That's one of the meaner clubs out oh, there. Oh yeah, Those guys are brutal. Oh yeah, Where, some is, of the best sumo tori in America. Since they surfs in your area, or is he like? No, that's North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina. like a, uh, was it Raleigh? Yeah, Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah. 
but uh, he's he's another one of the guys that wears not just the compression shorts, but he wears the long compression shorts to his knees, you know. So he's just a very modest guy, you know. But whenever he they made him go up there all uh, traditional, he was caked up. Yeah. I was like, dang, I didn't realize since I said had some cakes. <laughs> but you can tell he had like, because those guys practice outside. They do all of their Keiko, you know, outside. And so they always have the sun. All of them have beautiful tans. But, you know, Sensei Seth, here he is, you know, tanned for the most part, but bright white <laughs> lily butt cheeks, just blinding <laughs> the camera, just. Like headlights. But no, no. Yep. But no, uh, Sensei Seth. <laughs> Since they said you got some cakes, yeah. <laughs> but it, it was uh, he actually ended up beating Hayden. Like since they says like um, light heavyweight, but uh, I, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. He just happened to just catch Hayden at the right wrong time, whatever you want to call it, and just ended up uh, taking him down. Ended up throwing him, which is kind of because Hayden weighs as much as I do. Yeah. So that's like what four four thirty ish four twenty four thirty something like that. So yeah, we're we're hosses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, I see, I see. Man, we could riff on this for a minute, but uh, let's let's get into the boss show a little bit. Oh yeah. hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah! So um, let me see. I guess let me see. I got this, but but like, how did you feel about this Hatsu Basho? Hatsu meaning the first uh, tournament. Uh, what did you find interesting about it? Oh God, the whole thing was just. It, okay. it was one of those, you don't always have, like, a really interesting, really intense Basho, because they have, like, six of them a year, you know, but this one, this was a great way to start the year out. It really was. It it um it was the first time that uh, Terra no Fuji, you know, was coming back. Um, he had gotten we, entered in July of 2023. Yeah, leading up to it, though, uh, the YDC, that's the Yokozuna Deliberation Council, um, that's a separate organization of stodgy old men that's separate from the jsa they, <laughs> they still have a say in what kind of what goes on but they're mostly like corporate dudes too aren't yeah, they yeah like uh men of influence and, yeah and ceos wealth. and whatnot and that actually goes back to um in the olden days you know in the uh edo period like pre meiji restoration um the different daimyo would be um patrons of the sumo wrestlers and would you know like host the tournaments and stuff so it kind of goes back to that yokozuna didn't even used to be on the bonzuke it didn't used to be a rank it was um it was like you were licensed title. yeah you were licensed to perform a certain ceremony a certain ritual at shrines right and that was given to you by these uh daimyo am i using the right yeah, term the daimyo. daimyo okay um but then there was like a whole thing where eventually it did get put on the Bonds Cave. We're actually working on an episode about that right now. Um, so before uh, Ozeki used to be the highest rank, and then now it's Yokozuna as actually considered a rank. But the YDC, they still have a, they don't have any power within the JSA, but mm -hmm. they still have like a lot of influence and they could push you know a lot of jsa decisions they're the uh the corporate daimyo let's call Pretty them. <laughs> much. so anyway uh whatever Terano no fuji had to have his double knee surgery um they were like okay just heal you know we still need you to you know do your yokozuna duties you know but just go ahead and take your time and then um he ended up going to another tournament and then he pulled out because he hurt his lower back it, it was kind of scary because whenever he pulled out his legs were shaking and he couldn't hardly stand up or keep his balance but that was like a lower back injury you know that that hurt him that bad so he you know did his physical therapy went back you know got his medical certificate but they told him uh i think it was in november like after the november tournament hey you should probably get, you know, back into the tournament. You know, we really need you to get back doing your Yokozuna thing. And that was basically their way of saying, look, dude, if you need to retire, just retire. You can't well, keep sitting out. Well, that's 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 what happens is they'll they'll make a suggestion and then they'll make a statement. But then after the statement, they'll make a recommendation yes. and the recommendation is they will recommend you to retire yes when you're a yokozuna you can't get demoted anymore you know but if your performance starts to slip then they're yeah you just got to retire well, so i think yeah with Terra no Huji, he was ozeki and I, he didn't even lose he was just every time you're not at a basho that's like 15 losses 15 losses, yeah right? 
But you Pretty much. don't have that, right? They can just chill. exactly. I mean, they can chill. There's still the pressure. That's kind yeah of what's happening, right? And that that's why the the YDC just kind of like pokes and prods like do sumo, do sumo. Yeah. <laughs> so come on, do a sumo. <laughs> so since the the pandemic, you know, started kind of winding down, they started allowing the the Rikishi to go on Junyo, you know, their uh, tour, you know, their regional tours. Mm-hmm. And so Terano, those are fun. <laughs> uh, those are so great. But Terano Fuji um, had been going to those. He had been doing the Dohyo Eri, you know, entrance ceremony and. Um, he had been mingling with the people and answering questions, but he wasn't doing any practice bouts and he wasn't doing a whole lot of, you know, uh, training, like actual training. He honestly expected him to retire. And so a lot of the fans, especially, were looking at some of the Ozeki to take his place. First, it was Takakesho. You know, because we were like, okay, if Takakesho is able to win the November boss show, then he would become Yokozuna. That didn't happen. He got beat by Karishima in November. So then this January, everybody was like, well, if Karishima wins the January tournament, because if you win two tournaments in a row, typically if you're, they'll yeah, make you Yokozuna. Yeah, if you're an Ozeki and you win two concurrent, you know, you show. Right. Yokozuna, they'll, they'll just promote you. So win two tournaments at Ozeki and they will more than likely promote you. It, it, there are some caveats, but we won't get into that. But Terano Fuji came back for the January tournament. Yeah. And that just, <laughs> that kind of flipped the script a lot because here we all were thinking we're going to have Karishima as a new Yokozuna. We were glad Terano Fuji was back. We were glad he was feeling better, but we still kind of thought, you know, uh, is it going to be day three or four out. he's going to pull out you know that's yeah. what we can think is it going to be maybe day five and he still dominated you know the the way that he handled especially karishima in their bout. <laughs> oh the way he handled gonoyama too gonoyama yeah Jeez. so i think it was his way of saying look I'm not fucking going anywhere. I am still the boss around He's here. Like, I am the Yokozuna. He made sure everybody knew what it meant and he to be Yokozuna. The losses, I think. Yeah, like Wakamoto Haru got him. And then um, was it Meisei? Did Meisei get him? I can't yeah. remember who the other Kinboshi was. Remember. But it uh, sure wasn't Toby Zaru. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> when he went up against Toby Zaru, um, he was pretty rough with them for sure. And I think a lot of people speculated about why that was. Um, he said it was because Toby Zaru had caught him in the eye when he was like doing, you know, his supari. Um, and that kind of just like, you know, flipped a switch in him. You know how like if, if someone hits you just right, you just kind of like see see red and you don't remember how it happens, but they're lying in a puddle on the floor. Um <laughs> So that basically is what Terano Fuji's uh, explanation of it was. But other people were thinking, you know, well, Toby Zaru tried to kick his bad knee and that's why he did that. No, Toby Zaru is always trying to do leg sweeps. My guess was that maybe it had something to do with that July tournament last year because his bout with Toby Zaru in July is the one that he got injured and had to drop out for the rest of the year. Mm. So was it a revenge thing? I'm, I can't say 100%. I just like dramatic storylines. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we don't always have to go far as revenge, but sometimes you remember something like, I'm going to get that dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm going to kill his family. But yeah. if I if I get a chance, I'm gonna. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Just, we're just <laughs> knock his dick in the dirt. I'll be satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it was. Um, there was a lot of uh new guys too that got promoted. You know, to the upper division. You know, Shimazu from, Umi. Shimazu Umi. Oh yeah, there he is, right there. He did very well. And then uh, Ono Sato. Ono Sato. Wait, oh. is this is this who is this? Is this the one with Ura? That's um but she must have me on the right and Maysay. Yeah, there's Maysay. So Maysay's got the darker color. Oh, Maysay just beat Shimazu. Yeah. I think this is yeah. the last day highlights. Oh, oh hell yeah. And Shimazu Umi, he's got that big uh spot on his head from his tachi eye. He's like a <laughs> pachycephalosaurus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that guy just like rams people with his head. 
And um, but no, Shimazu Umi was one of the new guys. Ono Sato, um, he actually came from uh amateur sumo. He was he's at the uh world games in Birmingham. Yeah. And so his uh he wrestled under the name Daiki Nakamura at the World Games in Birmingham. And uh it was I think he took gold and open was it was open weight? I think it was open weight. But um Whenever he was in university, uh, he used to have to fight this guy named Hidatora Hanada. And he, he was also at the, the World Games. But Hidatora Hanada um, was the university Yokozuna. Like, he was – that was him. But he joined uh, American football. He's now at a – uni- Colorado – Team. Yeah, I think he's is it the Buffs. I think he's a buff now. I can't remember. I think it's Colorado I State. Follow football, so <laughs> I mostly just follow sumo. But yeah, he's a he's in Colorado. Yeah, so since he's up there, he's gr- let his facial hair grown out, and he's growing his you know hair. He's kind of looks like a little. Uh, I wouldn't say a stoner. He looks more like kind of <laughs> like a metalhead kind of looking kind of guy yeah. now. But I'm just he's cute. <laughs> but since he's in the states, I just I want to find that guy. I'm like, here, dude, have a burrito. It's like, try this. This is Mexican food. <laughs> have some barbecue. I know. Let's, let's have, this is called brisket. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to like find that guy and just you know like hang out with him. But Ono Sato has only been in uh, pro sumo for. Oh God, I think, was is this, this his, his third, fourth, third, or fourth, third or fourth? I think this I think was his fourth tournament in pro sumo and he's already in the top division already kicking ass he was one of the front runners uh up until like maybe the midway point uh during the january basho yeah he did really well i mean not just for his uh he's he's been in it for so little time that he hasn't even had chance to grow out his hair for them to put it in the chon mage yet because you know when you join pro oh, sumo that dude shave yeah, your he, head he, he kind of looked like the sanctuary dude yeah yeah well i don't know my wife disagrees she said just his hair but um <laughs> yeah pretty much just the hair yeah oh see is that a little young ono sato with short hair <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the see, people's champion right there. Yeah, Ono Sato. And then uh, there's, I have a, a, I'm a fan of a couple of specific Rikishi that I have proclaimed them to be my sons. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm 42, <laughs> you know, and so whenever uh, I look at some of these young Rikishi, I'm like, that kid's only 19. I'm old enough to be his daddy. And then one time I'm like, no, that is, I am his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a Tommy Fuji, um, Ono and uh, not Ono Sato. Ono Sato is my nephew, but uh, okay. a Tommy Fuji and Hakuwoho I have proclaimed to be my sons. But I I just said Ono Sato is my nephew because I can't have all the sons. Yeah. You know? So on, Ono Sato yeah. could be someone else's son. It's, it's kind of like when you're a kid watching cartoons, you know, like you're watching Ninja Turtles or something, and you're like. I'm Leonardo. I'm oh, Raphael. I'm Raphael. You know, it's it's kind of like that, except for oh, I'm not that person, but they're my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm too old to be that guy, so no, that's just my son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. I'm Batman. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, Ono Sato and Atami Fuji. Like, I was super proud of Atami Fuji. He got a Maki Koshi this time, but uh, since he's been in the top division, it only took him, what, two tournaments to go from the bottom of the Makauchi division up to Maigashira 1? Yeah, yeah. yeah so now he he uh, he got a Maki Koshi at Maigashira 1, so I'm sure he's probably going to drop down to, like, I'd say... I'd say probably M3. M5. You say M3, M5? Mm. I say M3, you say M5. I can't remember exactly what, what his score was. It was a uh, barely eight, got a Maki Koshi. Maki Koshi is a uh, more losses than wins. So um, you know you have 15 days in a basho. That's 15 uh, points you can get essentially. So if you get eight or more wins, then that's a Kachi Koshi. So it's more wins than losses. Um, if you get more losses than wins, so eight or more losses that's a maki koshi so if he got like maybe a like a seven and seven and eight eight he they may just drop him down to like my gashira two my gashira three if it was more than that i can't remember if it was or not but if it was maybe my gashira I, five i thought he only had eight losses it might have been nine i know it, it was, didn't been. get double digit losses 
Let's take a We've look. We've slept at the a few times since then. So, uh... <laughs> but when you say M three, M four, you're that's the number of losses. Is that what you? Oh say? no, no. Those are the ranks. So, so the Maka, ranks. Makauchi one, Makauchi two. Okay, I see. Oh, or it's Maka, actually Maka Maka Uchi is the division. Yeah. Maigashira is the first seventeen ranks from bottom uh, up of Makauchi. Then one step up from that is Komusubi. Uh, and then one step up from that is Sekiwaki, and then you have Ozeki and Yokozuna. So yeah, you'll have, they call them rank and filers, you know, like uh, that's Maigashira 2 or Maigashira 6, you know, and they're divided into East and West. And so you'll have Maigashira East. Oh, there's Shodai. <laughs> yeah, Shodai. But so there's like Maigashira 6 East and Maigashira 6 West. You know, there's always 42 Makauchi Rikishi. Yes, and East is considered to be like slightly above West. So if you're uh, Maigashira 8 East, it's basically like being Maigashira 8.5. Yeah. You know? So yeah, the East the East ranks are considered to be a little bit higher than the West ranks. Yeah. Oh, so they can go from east to west. It's not yes. like I just thought that was like that's where you're from or something. I don't know. Oh no, no, they, they'll they'll switch it around, you know, uh, on from one Bonzake to the next, you know. So it's like, oh well, whenever he was up at a, you know, Maigashira one East, oh, you know, he got bumped down to the east. Yeah. Is that, oh, then he got bumped down to Micashira 7 West, and they'll be like, oh, that's like a full eight ranks. You know, that's crazy. And they'll do that with the, um, like, Yokozuna, too. If you have more than one Yokozuna, which happens sometimes, you'll have, like, an East Yokozuna and a West Yokozuna. Yeah, or whenever they had uh, three Komosubis, there was, like, Komosubi 1 East, Komosubi 1 West, and then Komosubi 2 East, you know, so they do really weird things to the Banzuke to try and keep it balanced. That's like a yes. huge thing for them. If it's they, a big deal. Yeah, it has to be balanced. So um, a Yokozuna can also count as an Ozeki. Mm -hmm. So there always has to be, you know, two Ozeki on the Banzuke. Even if there is just only one active Ozeki, then the Yokozuna becomes Yokozuna Ozeki. And, and those those top ranks from you know Komusubi, Sekiwaki, Ozeki is is the, Yokozuna counted in Sanyaku as well? Nah, it's, it's above okay. the Sanyaku. So those top three ranks above Maigashira are referred to as Sanyaku. So the Sanyaku ranks, you usually only have one east and one west. Sometimes if people are doing really good, they'll open up another slot. You know, like when we had three or I think we had four Komusubi at I one point. I think we even had four Sekiwake <laughs> at one point too. That too, yeah. But usually it's only two, one east, one west. Yeah, it's, a lot of the times, um, especially now within the last like, would you say three years, there's just been so much talent up in the top division of sumo. It's just been really hard for people to either get promoted or to move around. It stayed like constipated up there for a yeah. really long time. And uh, a lot of the guys like uh, the, the current Sekewaki, like uh, Dai, is Daisho and um, well, Kotonowaka just got promoted, but um, they were they've been Sekewaki for a really long time just because there wasn't really any place else to go, you know, and they were kicking some ass. Yeah. Ura was, um, Komusubi this last boss show. And that oh, was God. the highest rank that he had ever gotten. To. Yeah. What's, what's bad about Komusubi and Maigashira one is it's the meat grinder. Oh yeah. They, they put you against like everybody that's incredibly hard that first week. So if you're a Komosubi, I think usually the first guy they make you fight is Komosubi's, uh, the Yokozuna. <laughs> and that's exactly what they did to Ura. This was his first Basho as a Komosubi. And so first day he goes up against Terra no Fuji and just gets completely crazy. <laughs> And then he goes up against the Ozeki, and then he goes up against the Sekiwaki. And that's that's what happened to my son, Atami Fuji, as well, at My Gashira 1, is he just had to fight everybody that was... That, that's his first time ever being at that high of a rank. And, you know, I think that was, like, what, his third tournament in the upper division? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so he still had a lot of learning to do about uh, some of those wrestlers' ticks, some of their weird quirks, you know. Just their style of sumo, yeah. too, because everybody has a different style of sumo. And everybody could get tricky, you know. <laughs> like, oh, like, yeah. Like, little, like Enho, you know, it, it took everyone a little bit of time to figure out Enho's style, you know, yeah, but like you, they just kept getting move. wrecked by it. Just don't move. 
make him come yeah. and then like <laughs> then he went right out of like bound the Jiro, which is so because i got so many people in the sumo because of inho because they're like mm-hmm. oh we're just a bunch of fake guys meh, meh, meh. it's and like then, shit well now we have guys like midori fuji who is also like a a smaller dude but you know he's gotten a I th- did he get a kimboshi this tournament or was it when did he get his kimboshi, kimboshi a kimboshi is when yeah right it's when a maigashira so a ranker filer makuchi division rikshi beats the yokozuna midori fuji is a smaller dude um we call him the pit bull because he's just like this ferocious little pit bull he just laughs <laughs> on doesn't let go like ah. yeah um but he still is very capable of taking down dudes much bigger than him if you have a chance look up his bout i forget when it was but it was uh midori fuji versus hokuseiho oh that was um either september or november of 2023 Hokuseiho is a huge dude. He's not like really like wide or anything, but he's extremely tall. He's like two meters. Yeah, he's over two meters. He's he's a very tall guy. His style of sumo is usually just grabbing onto the back of his opponent's mawashi and just standing there as they struggle and tire themselves out. And then he'll win once they tire themselves out. Would you call it his Frankenstein style? Yeah, yeah. But he's like Groot, you know, he's just like a giant brute ricochet. But Midori Fuji, you know, wasn't there like, was it 16 or 18 inch height difference between the two? Yeah, yeah, huge height difference. And Midori Fuji was just like, Timber! <laughs> yeah, he did a he did a shitatsu nage. It almost looked like he was doing like a ponzioi, you know, just like. But he had a hold of the belt, you know, and then just like, boom, just like perfectly executed shitatsu nage. And you could see Hokuseho's feet swing through the air, you know, <laughs> and like just lands on his back. He was so pissed after that. And like wow. Midori, That's a happy man. yeah, Midori Fuji just had that smug like, yeah, kind of look on his face. It was awesome. But I, I think in the Basho after that one, um, they had another bout against each other and Midori Fuji did win that one. So that's why I was mm. trying to think, which one was that? It was, yeah, either September or November of 23. I think it probably was September, actually. But if you can find it, it's it's amazing to watch, for yeah, sure. I'll check it out. Yeah. Since yeah. you mentioned Ura, let's take a look at uh, Ura's uh, match here because he pulled off this spoiler alert. Oh. He hits this really cool move. Um pretty rare in sumo yeah um but uh yeah let's do a little little uh little breaky action of this all right so uh let me play that mad boy here so here we got uda and who's he against here oh that looks like Rudin. Rudin. Okay. yep that's true you did all right yeah sabrina calls him sumo snape <laughs> So okay, so yeah, Rudin had like tried to get some underhooks on him. So let's see. Oh, and he keeps grabbing like his side boob. I don't know why that was bothering me so. He's like Freddy Kruegering his boob. And I'm like, his elbow. Squ-. He's trying to get his elbow. I think. Like leave his boob alone, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I see he's like trying to reach, you know. But Uda's body mechanics are so. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's yes. my boy. Hell yeah! This is a really awesome move. This is actually like pretty rare in sumo. Like this is like. Oh, very rare. This is like wrestling, right? Because most people in sumo don't like to get this crouched down. Because that's Mm-mm. like really dangerous for Hataki Komi, right? You can get just slapped down your knee. Oh, yeah. Up, right? But he's, I, I'm just like really crazy about this base. So I looked him up and like his original base is like international wrestling. Yeah. So you can see him. Now, there is a weird name for this. I don't know what it was. Like this is kind of like Roma or... A fire oh, it's Ty- oh, it's Taizori. The Kimarite, the finishing move, it's Taizori. Right, but like, uh, two, it's... like two, dai. See it right taizori. Here, even yep. though he's got this underhook, he's not letting them get the Mawashi, but he's like trying to wrap up this elbow so he can't like go further. This is like what we use a lot in wrestling. Like, if yeah. a lot of times if you hold their elbow, even if they like get behind it, you can just pass them by. But it's dangerous because a lot of times you still fall to your knees. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To to hit this move, and I just thought this really, this is really cool. It's so bold because it could have not worked. In fact, it was probably the odds are probably on it not working because this dude's pretty big. 
I've I've seen I've seen him um bust this out like uh, quite a few times, and it? I think I've only seen him fail it like maybe twice. You know. Yeah. So I think I don't think he's trying to grab the broom. I, see, now he's got what he wants. Yeah. I think he, he's he's looking for this elbow. Oh crap! I can't see where I'm drawing. <laughs> yeah, he's looking for this elbow. Now that he's got the elbow. Now I, I think. Well, you see how he's kind of got uh, Ura's arm up like that. That's smart because that means that Ura is not going to be able to grab his belt with that arm. Yeah. So he's trying to keep it high. And it knocks you off your center of gravity. It makes you easier to drive when you're kind of at an angle. Yeah, like that, that you know. too. Yeah. No, this is really cool. Like right here. Yeah, yeah. So he can't get this Mawachi action here. Right? He wants to grab that sweet booty, but he can't. He's like, "No, sir, <laughs> you may not." <laughs> and you see also how they they each have their hips like like pushed back so they're they're at an angle you know oh, they're okay, not so like they're belly to belly they're like, like chest to chest yeah they're like leaning over like that because they have to keep their hips as far away from each other as possible and to keep the mawashi away they're trying yeah. to do that platonic that platonic hug right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and, and that's friends. a we're just friends. That's that the other thing that that Rudin guy has, though. Like Rudin, um, he has like that weird hip twitch. Like if you manage to get a belt grip on him, he has this hip shimmy thing that'll like break your grip. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those Rikishi have insane grip strength. So to imagine like, oh, yeah. how hard of a hip twitch you'd have to do to like rip someone's grip. That's insane. That's some butt strength and core strength. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> But right. but yeah, that uh, that's like a pure defensive type thing, you know, keep your butt like that far away. Yeah, but still, this is oh, this is probably still anybody's game here. Still, like, well, no, I, I would say Uda's definitely got his back against the wall, so mm -hmm. he's definitely he's the closest to the Tawara, that's yeah, for sure. He's definitely kind of got a he's kind of in a hot spot, a little bit, not yet, but I wonder. I think he, I was talking to my wife about is like. I think he wanted to hit this move. Sometimes you hit the suicide moves because you know you're already up against the wall. But I think he wanted to hit it. Cause and that's the cool. thing about Oda is he's always trying to go for those like rare Kimari te, those really like fancy moves, you know, because that's just, I think that's just his preference. You know, everybody has like their own style of sumo. That's Ura's style of sumo. I just love that. Is so maximum is like, effort struggle face. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's really like. But this is like, like I think somebody without a wrestling background would have just fell. But so he's, if, got, he's got that limbo thing going on. He shoots the arm through, because like a lot of times you'll grab the leg and you'll like twist him down, but then you're gonna fall on your knees. So you got to do the crazy version. And notice how. Oh like, yeah. He's still got this elbow action. Oh, that's the butt. So it, it looked to me elbow, like... Even as he falls, and your human instinct is like, I'm falling, let go. Yeah. But, but you can't let go. Because <laughs> right. it's fall on you. Right? So I think this is really cool. The amount of uh, you know, conviction he has with this move. Because it looked uh, to me like, like Uro was trying to you know take the leverage that he had with the underhook on, or I'm sorry, Muted was trying to take that leverage with the underhook on Ura's arm and kind of like dump him over. But Ura is so good at balance that he just kind of like, you know, squeezes on underneath Ryudin's arm and like just pushes with all of his might backwards yeah. and since Rudin's a little bit like kind of over committed like leaning yeah forward, you know so being that over committed and then being pushed to the side that's that's just the final nail in the coffin right there mm -hmm. yeah well I mean usually with this move like yeah you you hit it when people are a little bit too aggressive and they're going forward I would argue though I think Rudin's actually trying to back up now but it's too late <laughs> now probably yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to back up now but he's just got this grip here and the position of his leg too of Rudin's leg he's not going to be able to get out of that very easily yeah like i think if Rudin could have gotten back just like a couple inches this way if he was he able to like able swing to that leg off. back yeah but notice how how is uh this arm right here is actually kind of blocking him from like being able to like reposition like mm -hmm. I think if he could, if and he then he's could also have, like circle this way, then I think Ura would fall like straight down. Oh yeah. But he's blocking his arm out like this, which is really cool. 
It's kind of interesting because we have to do this kind of in judo now because it's illegal to grab the legs. And so you have to do like a version here, but it's so hard to get people actually on their back. But sumo, you don't have to do that. You just have to get them yeah. down. But still, I don't know. That major style points, I just say. I just had to oh, yeah. the honorable mention. I don't know. Like, no, no. I, but what I think is cool is um, I see a lot of uh, people that have gone from either like freestyle wrestling or like Greco-Roman wrestling. And uh, just to see like their hand fighting and the way that their minds work, their understanding of like the human body and human body physics. It's like it makes for like a way more interesting style of sumo than just the, you know, I'm just driving forward, you know, yeah. style. So I, I really appreciate sumo you know, machine go. <laughs> but to see, you know, Uda just have that type of um like battle perception is just that's insane to me I, I just love that stuff well it's true though but you gotta you gotta respect the mawashi grip too you know yeah. so yeah the hand fighting is a little different well but well oh so he's trying to actually reach over and get the overhand back grip and then he wouldn't be able to do it right if he didn't have access to his hips he couldn't shoot through right uh but yeah so. yeah he's gonna try and peekaboo out there and trap his head in his elbow. When does he do it? Well, I don't think he actually does it until he feels like he's. Oh, so it's like when that left leg, that leg that's closest to us, gets back a little bit more. Let's see. Nope. Yeah. See, now he's like too low. I think he feels like he's shutting out. But I think Rudin gets a little greedy. And yeah, I think it was as soon as he starts that forward momentum. He starts trying to lift up his elbow to jack him up. Grabbing his side boob though. Oh, That's just uh. <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's, trying his side boob, but... he's trying to he's not trying to grab the boob, he's trying to get this. He's trying to scoop that elbow. Oh, okay. The boob is just kind of in the way. Oh, I thought you were talking about <laughs> Uda grabbing it. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Rudin grabbing Uda's side boobs. Like yeah. Freddy Krueger in it. <laughs> what the hell? See, it's <laughs> just like yeah, he's, he's, trying to keep, slow motion, so it's super he's weird. really but, he's trying to keep Ura's left arm up and away from his belt is yeah. what he's trying to do. Yeah. I think whenever Ura's arm was going down, he's punishing him by squeezing his fat. Yeah, and also like that does get you off balance. Yeah. There we go. There, there he goes. Go. Oh, fireman's carry. Oh, oh, he missed that leg. You notice he missed the leg, so he just pushes his elbow back. Yep. I think he did it on purpose. Fuck though. Yes. I think. He went to the <laughs> Do you think he might have like put his arm down just muscle memory and was like, oh wait, and just because yeah. <laughs> yeah, whenever I, I did well, when you, I did you, wrestling you, as you a use kid. it in wrestling when you put your hand on the outside, it's yeah. you're not gonna do the fireman's, it's you're gonna break free and spin behind. Uh yeah. so that'd be that's what I think. But I think he meant to go out like that because like I said, if Rudin would have circled towards him, he would have like fell straight down. Yeah. So, since he was out like this. I don't know, just really cool. And it could have it could have been a disaster. <laughs> and some I've seen a couple of times whenever he tried to bust it out. It's like someone was driving him to the very end. And you could see him, he dips down to get in that low crouch like he was gonna try, but then I, I think it might have been was it Terano Fuji? It might have been Terano Fuji just kind of pushed him over how he was doing that and he just kind of toppled, but Oh, he tried it with um, Terano Fuji. Uh -huh. It was like a couple. Oh, there was the other time when he tried that on Terra no Fuji and did like that Matrix thing where he like gra had a grip on his belt, but he was like upside down and Terra no Fuji was trying to just throw like... him, but he was just like <laughs> Matrix onto his belt and then he just smashed him down. It's like, uh, get off! Look, look, look how close that butt is to the ground, though. That's like, yeah. And he doesn't fall. That's that's crazy. But yeah, that's he does lots of sumo lower body strength. That's what we were talking about earlier. Those leg muscles are just so powerful. And you know, he does squats where he like butt to the ground squats. And yeah. you know, that's insane to me. I can't even imagine doing. It. <laughs> if you can find like a compilation of Ura videos you'll see like all kinds of crazy shit like that yeah he's known for it I think there was, was a... actually kind of a decision too because they were like he kind of fell he kind of landed on his shoulder here but i think they have a rule because you could see rudin right both of his feet yeah. are up in the air but they yeah. they just about might not have given it to him yeah, if like, um, where is it right here? Oh, Rudin landed first. Yeah, yeah Rudin landed. First. I guess it's a tough call, but especially with that move, it's so hard to. Well, his knee is touching. I guess. Well, yeah, they'll they'll I, call I a mono e. Like yeah, did, did this have a mono e? I can't remember if there was a mono e on this one or not, but I, I believe there was. Yeah, 
But I okay. think it should be whoever did the coolest thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, the cooler it looks, the more winning you do. Hell yeah. <laughs> But to me, like that Stizori was like one of the like the my favorite moments of that entire tournament. It was just like yes! I remember when it happened. It was like two or three in the morning. Texas jumped time. up out of our chair. Yeah, because we were like barely awake. We're just kind of like, oh man, we'll we'll go to bed when it's over, bleary eyed. And then that happened, and we're both like, oh my god, and screaming at the TV. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure this so... is like the nervous pacing, and they're like, okay, yeah, no, he definitely got he got it. But oh yeah. Oh yeah, he got it. Yeah, if they, if they let him, yeah, happen that way. Something that's like, ah, come on. But we're Wait, big. So this is six and nine. Did the... <laughs> did, did uh, Oh, he got a Makikoshi. He did. Yeah, so he's gonna lose his Komasubi rank, but I think they'll probably, if if they're generous, they'll probably put him down to Maegashira one West. But I think he's probably gonna be like Maegashira two or three. Yeah. Which is still a tough spot to be. Those first or those top five Maegashira ranks are referred to as the Doi because those top Maegashira ranks, they will have bouts against the Sanyaku ranks, and the, the Komosubi and the Sekiwaki and Ozeki and whatnot. So, yeah, anybody that has to fight the Yokozuna is considered to be in the joy. Yes. But if you get in the joy, then uh, you kind of get like a bit of preferential treatment when it comes to uh, like if you get a bad score and have to get demoted, they won't demote you as hard if you're in the joy as they would if you're like, you know, lower ranked. <laughs> yeah, some some guys, they'll be like, what the hell are you even doing up here? We're demoting you back down to the bottom. Wait. We have plenty of debate on um, the rationale for some of the ways that they build the Bonzake. <laughs> what, what's funny is um, there's some podcasts out there like Grand Sumo Breakdown where they play games like Guess the Bonzake. Yeah. There had been a scandal where like the uh, head coach and head judge, um, Issei Gahama, um, I can't remember what the scandal was exactly, but he ended up stepping down from being the head judge. And so uh, there's an another guy, um, Sarogatake. No, is it Sarogatake? Uh, I, I always I always sure. mix up this guy's stable and Oyakata name with like a leg trip move. You know the Sotogake. Yeah. Sotogatake. God damn it! I'm gonna. <laughs> anyway, it's Kotonowaka's dad, yeah. and Kotonowaka's dad is actually an ex Ozeki by the name Koto no Wake. The point being that when uh, this Take change was made, it seemed like the way that the Bonzake was being built was different yeah. than it was before. Because Koto no Wake's dad, you know, has uh, his own different oh, band of cronies. Speak and... of the son of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so now Koto no Wake's dad's the guy in charge. But I think, I, I hate to say this or assume this, but it seems like, I feel like Koto no Wake should have been... Um, promoted a lot sooner it seems like it you know it seems the reason he hasn't been was because his dad is afraid of it looking like nepotism but this bout here he's going oh, up against oh, toby okay. zaru yeah he's going up against toby zaru who is a wrestler who's very much like ura you know he has those tricks he has like a very unique style of sumo he's not as like bouncy and weenie the poo as ura but he kind of still has like <laughs> <Winnie the Pooh. laughs> But see, like Toby Zaru's all over the place. Yeah, he but, definitely. Yeah. And he hasn't been Makuchi for very long either. I don't think. Oh, oh. no, he has. <laughs> he's been in Makuchi for quite a while now. It's been like what three years, three four years. Are we talking about Toby Zaru or Kotonowaka? Toby Zaru. Yeah, yeah, he's been in Makuchi for but a while. For a little oh, bit, though, he was like stuck down at the towards like the bottom. I would say for like was it maybe the first couple years. Yeah. I mean, so it's just a match here, though, that, that got him a match with the Kete Sin. Uh, like, there's like a three way tie, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. There? So that's. Um, not, not in this spa show. No, this is the one. Where... This is where. Uh, well, not. Well, Toby Zari wasn't involved in the playoff. It was. Um, Koto no Waka and uh, Tara no Fuji had the playoff. Right. But if Toby Zaru had won that. Then, then it would have been a three-way playoff between Perno Fuji, Kotonowaka, and Kurishima. But because Tobizaru lost this bout, it was just between Kotonowaka and uh, Terano Fuji. Okay. Yeah. It, 
But that uh, bout, that very last bout, actually, it was at the beginning of this, uh, whenever it shows Kota Nawaka picking up his salt, and he's like making kind of like a little mean face, you know. Um, he kind oh. of, yeah, he makes he makes this kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm getting ready, and then you could see Tara Nofuji sitting in the audience making this Just face, kind of like, like oh, whatever, man. <laughs> But it 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 was great to see the actual like you know playoff bout you know because this this poor Karishima just gets oh, man. These guys in. never face each other before apparently, huh? Um, they're uh, what they have a, yeah they're, have they have um if you roll it back a bit it'll show whether or not they've uh yeah that little faced uh, each other. But I think they have. I think it showed that. Um, I think oh, oh yeah there was yeah. that little thing. Because I think... that chart that it showed was the uh, previous bouts. I think they have actually. I think I think they met like was it ten times? Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, oh, no, there oh, it is. Yeah, and, and then he won every time. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah Terano Fuji. That's that's exactly right. I don't know why I didn't remember that. Terano Fuji has won every bout that they've had. Karishima has never won a bout against Terano Fuji. And this is kind of like the the where it's really sank in, you know, because everyone really wanted Kurishima to succeed, take this Yusho and become, you know, Yokozuna. But uh, Kurishima going up against the current Yokozuna kind of gives you a feel for what Yokozuna level sumo is. Yeah, you know? yeah. And if... I think Kurishima will become a Yokozuna and I think he'll be a damn good Yokozuna, but that is... Not this basho. <laughs> Watch this. Dude, that is just like just eats him. <laughs> and look, does is like, yep, another day at the office. Yeah. <laughs> look at poor Colton walk. He's like, God damn it, now I gotta go fight this giant dude. <laughs> Tarana Fuji's like, oh, I guess one more, and then I could get my chunk over. Yeah. <laughs> but man, look yeah, at those steps. Look too worried, yeah. yeah. Man, yeah. I, want, I want at least one of those envelopes. That's, Just pay my rent. <laughs> right? But no, that's that's that sumo, like, you know, stoicism, like very, very calm on the outside, at least. Um, on the inside, they can be as nervous as they want to be or as stoked as they want to be for beating up Karishima. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, on the outside, you can't show any emotion. You have to be just, you know. Yeah, it's, it's funny. There is... Um, this uh youtuber named sumo stew and she made this little video of all the times that the sumo wrestlers um were trying to hide their emotion but just couldn't yeah. and so they're about some of them like were they just won about where they're about to get promoted and they're just so happy but there was a toby zaru one where he just keeps going <laughs> he's trying not to cry his he's just face. He just keeps making that face. I'm like, oh, that poor guy. Yeah. And there was another one, oh, Show Hoda. Um, the one who ended up winning the U show. Oh, Tok Shoryu. Tok Shoryu, who just like burst into tears after winning the yeah <laughs> winning that tournament. Yeah, that was like a freak occurrence. Um, he he was like Maigashira 17, and the he lowest had... of the Maigashira. Yeah, the or, lowest. Yeah. And so he had just got he he usually would get promoted from Jurio to to Makauchi and get go back down to Jurio, but um this time he just he plowed through everybody his uh I, I can't remember was it his Oyakata or was it like his university coach I can't remember I think it was his university coach passed away but he just plowed through everybody so you said this guy that facing Tono who's you know his dad or uncle is was Yokozuna or something. Like Which one? Uh, yeah, Kota Nawaka's dad. Yeah, Kota Nawaka's dad was an Ozeki, and his grandpa was an a Yokozuna named Koto Zakura. But um, Kota Nawaka's dad is the current uh, head of his stable, and there he goes. And, and he's the like head judge that does the Banzuki. Like, no real big drum. I mean, up against the Tawada, it was a little bit of a little bit of a push, but he, he didn't seem to, like he was too worried. Oh no, but that was oh man, Terano Fuji. There's a reason why he's the Yokozuna, and it's funny because you know, looking back a couple years ago, um, whenever he Terano Fuji fought Hakuho, Hakuho made Terano Fuji look like he made Koto Nawaka look in this, yeah. you know. So it's just like wild to me to see, you know, that's just how badass Hakuho was at the time, and then you see. I think to me, I feel like I just got so used to seeing how badass Hakuho was that so how untouchable he was that that was the expectation of Yokozuna Sumo for me. I don't think 
it's just you. A lot of people have expressed that sentiment that Hakuho was such an exceptional wrestler that uh, now that he's retired, it's it's hard to really find anyone that compares to him, you know. And yeah. you you do have we we do have Teruto Fuji as Yokozuna, but like he's he's not necessarily getting the numbers that Hakuho was. He's still a great Yokozuna. I think he's um now tied for um uh I want to say fifteenth out of uh, most Yusho wins uh, of all time. Um, or and I was it fifteenth? Yeah, because it was his ninth U show win. Yep. This one was, and so now he's tied for fifteenth with uh like a couple other people. So, you so, know, out of the, how many Yokozuna have there been now? Like seventy something? I think seventy three, seventy two, seventy three. Yeah, but you know, so Teru no Fuji, um, his numbers may not be as astronomical as Akuho, but he still has damn good numbers and though he is undeniably you know a yokozuna but a lot of us just got so used to uh, or even like asaf shoryu or like harma fuji just like you know those guys were just like insanely good yeah and so if you look at some of the older yokozuna that were out there even like chiano fuji mm -hmm. you know chiano fuji like you know he was consistently winning but you know his um his style wasn't like as frenetic. He was pretty throw happy as the Mongolians, but not as throw happy. He still did yeah. a lot of just basic driving sumo, you know. Yeah, and the the fans love the flashier stuff. They love the dramatic throws and like you know the shit that Ura does. But even the just the really straightforward, like you know, like a Yori Kiri or um, um, Oshidashi. Oshidashi. Yeah, you know where you're just like pushing someone out of the ring. Basically, that's all it is. Just pushing some of the out of the ring. You don't really see it from the outside, but there's a lot of pressure in that moment. There's like, you know, these two dudes using all of their strength against each other. And yeah, it may not look flashy, but it's still like it's a test of might. You know, I still love seeing the Supari battles when you have two Oshizumo specialists just smacking the crap out of each other. I, I do prefer Oshizumo that. just because it is nice to, to see them just slap the shit out of each other. I like other. seeing some slug fests every yeah. now and again. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and that's yeah. thanks for that's the why, uh, breakdown. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there he is doing his uh... no show eerie. Oh, there's that army got him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when he fought Uda that first day, um, he just whipped Uda around by his arm. It's like he straightened it, that like his arm out and swung it like the wrong way. And you could tell was everybody like, oh, was afraid that Ura's arm was gonna be injured from that, but that boy is made out of rubber. He's he's a stretch nothing... arm strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, nothing can hurt him. Except his knees. Except, in, yeah, I was about to say, except knee injuries. He will find a Rikshi that doesn't have knee issues. Yeah, no, for real. Right. Yeah. Maybe if we had Sumo on the moon or something. Uh, yeah, oh, that'd be cool. Sumo, my God. <laughs> Don't do that. Let's come talk on, to NASA. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's talk to Elon Musk. I got a great idea for you. Stop this whole <laughs> Sumo on the moon. Yeah. They get a space mawashi. <laughs> oh my god. Right? Space mawashi. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But yeah, this tournament, um, I mean, not just like in the uh, because we, we paid most attention to the Makauchi division. That's you know, a lot of a lot of people that's that's where the the flashier action is. But there was like some younger uh lower division guys like Aonishki. Aonishki's uh a Ukrainian kid, and uh, I think he what was it, the Sandame or or is it Joni Don? I think it was either Joni Don or Sandan. But he just took that you show. He's a powerhouse. That kid is going places. Mm -hmm. And then uh in Makushta, um, we had Wakataka Kage. He used to be in Makuchi, yeah. in top division, but he sustained an injury and had to sit out for a pretty long time. It was a knee injury. <laughs> yeah, and so he got bumped down all the way to the, the third division from the top, which is Makushta, where there's like a hundred... There's a hundred. 
or 106, either 100 or 100, something like that. I think There's like a that. lot of dudes in Makushita, so it's it's a huge battle to climb up to Division 2 from Division 3. So Makushita is like the, uh, you're still considered to be like an attendant, you know, so you don't get a salary. You have to live at the stable. Yes. And uh, you you still have to, you know, help somebody, like a, a higher ranked Rikishi with their laundry and do their chores and, you know, do Only all that. Only the top two divisions actually make any money. Yeah, so if you could get promoted out of Makushta to Jurio and become a Sekitori, that's like heaven and hell. It's like the total 180. So then you start getting a salary, like a good salary. You, and you could get married. Yeah, finally. you could get married and date and do all that when you're, you're a Sekitori. You can't date if, or you have to ask permission to date if you're not a Sekitori. Yeah. So yeah, you get promoted. You could date. You could be on TV. You know, they, they televise more of your, your bouts. And that goes back to the whole like tradition and the, the very like conservative way that that hierarchy and yeah. the way to climb the hierarchy is a very, you know, that's the tradition that they're never going to let go of, you know, to yeah. strive for excellence, to climb the Bonzaki kind of thing. You right. Know? But, um, but yeah, whenever you're a, a Sekitori, that's what Wakataka Kage is trying to get back to. Cause he was in the Sanyaku. He was a Sekiwake for a long time mm -hmm. and then had that knee injury, but he's coming back. He, he actually thought maybe he would make Yokozuna eventually, but he took the uh, Makushita Yusho without like missing a, he didn't lose any bouts. Zen, Zen show. Yusho. Yusho. Yeah. Okay. Wakataka Kage was badass. And then in Jurio, we had dudes like uh, Takeru Fuji. Oh, Takeru Fuji. Yeah. Yeah, Takeru Fuji, this kid, he's uh, from Isegahama Bea, but he's another just like, he's got big shoulders, you know, he's like, <laughs> he's kind of built like the Terminator. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's like the freaking Terminator. Just whatever he mounts the dosho, it's just like, doom, 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 <laughs> doom, doom, doom. And he just plows through those guys. Like his Tachi eye is just like a Mack truck. And these, you know, these dudes are used to taking heavy Tachi eyes all the time, but he just blows them off the dojo. Like, no shit. Yeah. Off the dojo. <laughs> so we're probably going to see him in Makuichi soon. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And then... Um, um, so you guys, I saw some posts on your YouTube. Have you seen the, the Sanctuary show? Oh, yes. oh, yeah. We have an episode that we released on our podcast about it last year. I love... Uh, Sanctuary. <laughs> I, I was wondering if maybe we could touch on that next time, if we could talk again. Oh, hell yeah. Think, That'd be uh, cool. Because we've, we've dissected it pretty hard, and yeah. the reason is because we get into a, this is so stupid, but we get a lot of online arguments with a lot of dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, uh, the, the big thing about Sanctuary is that... It's, it's, it's drama. Exactly. Yeah. You, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta take it as it is, right? It's, it's a drama. Thank you. But there is still a lot of uh, that world that goes into the story. You know, yeah. a lot of the uh, sumo tradition and culture is still. Especially the, the underhanded tactics that the hey, uh, even use against each other kind of thing. Like the, yeah. uh, the politics, you know. You know, and th this is stuff that's um, partially even based off of um public information you know like scandals and stuff that have happened over the years and like um like with the hazing and stuff like that that's been a perennial issue in sumo for a yeah. while now um and they say it's not as bad as it used to be but then you know we've some of the scandals still come out you yeah know. we yeah, we've yeah, heard yeah, stories yeah. recently that prove that that's otherwise yeah. But yeah, if you ever wanted to take a deep dive into Sanctuary, we are so down. <laughs> yeah, we'll try it next time. But uh, man, it's really cool kind of getting to know what you do and uh, kind of dissecting the boss show a little bit. It was like, it was so great. Thanks for Hell making yeah. the time, man. Oh, I, thanks I for having us. This is so fun and I, I love that you you know sumo and like you know you'd say like oh yeah my wife was telling me this. it's just so cool to talk to someone that's like you know just gets excited about it like we do so. yeah <laughs> for sure for sure i mean my, yeah i kind of had to learn sumo so i can talk to my in-laws yeah, <laughs> oh, <hell> yeah. <laughs> but yeah i mean sometimes it uh it's so peaceful though all the chanting and stuff like that I kind of doze off sometimes though, so I usually try to watch the highlights unless it's like yeah, a so big, big match. Yeah. yeah, the highlights are more. But I like that. It gives me a good action. feeling, but after I get done with work and I'm like, hoo, hoo, 
Yeah, you hear the Yobadashi doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you like... start hearing them call the names and you know clacking the Hyoshigi, and it's just like ah, oh, just gotta relax. I started <laughs> hearing that Hyoshigi in my sleep recently. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Well, yeah, let's see what we can do this next time. Yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah um, yeah. Anytime that uh, just hit us up, and we'll take a look at our schedule and stuff. Since the Basho is over, we have a little bit more free time. Mm -hmm. But anytime there's a Basho happening, we're we're pretty you know wrapped up in that. You know that's like our oh, yeah. intense time. So yeah. But if you ever wanted to jump in with us on one of our episodes and like, you know, because we uh, we watched the Basho and then we waxed poetic about it, you know, like write little write ups about the bouts that we love in a really silly way, you know. Oh, but if what you, are you ever... watch it on, do you just have like an NHK membership or something or? Yeah, just NHK. Um, what else? We do NHK and then uh, whenever we do the live streams, we'll do um, like Midnight Sumo on Twitch, you know, yeah. just like live stream. Oh. But they're just they just it's just someone has a, a Bima. And they're just live streaming Abima. But um, what's cool about Midnight is they don't just rely on the Abima live stream. Like whenever they go to commercial, they'll start playing videos of like really weird Japanese commercials that Americans typically don't see. Yeah. So they replace the Abima live stream commercials with other commercials. You know, yeah. they, they redid oh. the uh, the theme music. Yeah. Like the little rap song by AK69. Like they made their own little music video to it, you know, that has like, you know, the Rikishi being silly and doing all that stuff. Sometimes during the commercials, though, they'll also show like old bouts. Yeah. Sometimes they'll show well. bouts from the 60s and the 70s. Yeah. You know? Um, it just, and it that's just always fun. I like that. Yeah. That, that's what I like about some of the live streamers on Twitch is that it's not just, you know, it's not just a bootleg of the, uh, the live stream. It's they add their own content in there and other content kind and of they curate have, like, their own community too. You know, they have like all these inside jokes that like, oh, you God. kind of start to pick up on after a while. That's, that was one of my favorite. <laughs>